What we're going to do today is we're going to give Yads, E, Yads, Y A D Z, and Popeye, Popeye One, a big shout out. Because they are, in fact, collecting monies to feed the children of the Philippines, along with the assistance of Mick Fisher and Michael Hunt, H U N T. And a few others. And um, Yads and Mick Fisher just recently somehow garnered enough money to feed 500 children in the Philippines. And there's a video on her channel showing hundreds of children gathered around foods that they collected the monies for. So, Yads, if someone wants to post her um, link and Popeye's link, they are both collecting money for the children for Christmas foods in the Philippines, and that's a pretty cool thing to do. So let's give them a big shout out for feeding 500 local children to Yadza's area in Cebu a few weeks ago. And, uh, and, and let's give Popeye a special shout out for never, not one time, ever degrading Michael Thomas Fazio. Although <laughs> he allows other people to quasi degrade Michael Thomas Fazio. He doesn't allow the degrading itself. Now, no one, I have to, to my, to my uh, astounding psyche, no one has mentioned my name in a negative way. So for that, we will give Popeye and Yads and almost Nico. Almost Nico. Because ni ni Nico, he did mention the island guy in a negative way yesterday. So Nico is not without sin. And that's what the second part of today's show is going to be. I want you to look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. And if you see that you are getting sleepy, sleepy, it is because you have been succumbed by the Giga, the Giga Ego, Ego. Ego. Oh, the Giga Ego. He has many, many ways. All in greenbacks. In greenbacks and bluebacks, ladies and gentlemen. The Giga Ego. He has hypnotized you. You are getting ego sleepy, sleepy ego, ego. Ah, ni, ni, ko, ni, ko said, oh, ni, ko, he said. He cannot be flipped with greenbacks. His soul don't go that way. But it does. It did. Something flipped the Nico and forced Nico, forced Nico to say that the island guy made up a story that the Giga Ego had a harem. I have 
have news for you, Nico. It was not a story. It was the truth. The truth, I tell you. You know it was the truth. And that's why Popeye, that's why Mickey Fisher and Michael Hunt, that's why they never said a negative word about the island guy. And almost without sin, Nico, Nico, mentioning the island guy made up a story about a harem. Well, Nico, you know, you know, Popeye knows, Yads knows, Mick Fisher knows, Scott Del Fuego knows, Michael Hunt knows, Allo knows. Nico, Nico, you have been mesmerized by the greenbacks, supplied by the Giga Eagle. The Giga Eagle. But that's okay, Nico, you're not the first. But you did, in fact, belittle one of the first, the big cabin. The big cabin has succumbed to the Giga Eagles Greenback ways for many, many days. And that's okay, because the big cabin, as you said, has nothing going for him at all. His only way is to e e beg, e beg. Big cabin has no other choice than to e e beg. That's the big cabin's only way to make money. And because the big cabin allowed people to talk about your friends, Nico, Nico, that triggered Nico to go against the big cabin. But the big cabin, Nico, Nico, listen to me. Who is supplying the big cabin with most of the begging dollars, donations, greenbacks, is your friend. Is your friend, Nico, is your friend, the Giga Eagle. But you can't have it both ways, Nico. What you do. So the person who went against one of your friends is being funded by another one of your friends who, by the way, does not have a harem because you are looking into my eyes and you are getting sleepy, sleepy. You are listening to the Giga Ego. It's happening to you. The Giga Ego says, I never had a harem. I never wanted a harem. I don't have a harem. And Flying Circus, that's all artificial intelligence CGI on the Flying Circus video. Because I never had a harem. Nico. Nico. Oh, blame this all on Scott the Fuego. It was his idea. I did not make this video. You did not see this video. It's in your brains. 
insane in the brains. It's your Giga Eagle, Nicole. So, Big Kevin, he went against your friend and said very bad things. So Big Cabin is on the outskirts of the Giga Eagles. Donos, Donos from the Giga Eagles goes to the Big Cabin. So are you, Nico, are you going to split from the Giga Eagle or will you allow the Giga Eagle to give you donos, Nikos? What is your answer? So as you well know, ladies and gentlemen, I have never been caught in a lie on YouTube. And so everything that you just heard, no matter how crazy it might appear to be on the outset, was done in the level of satire that only Michael Thomas Fazio and his famous yellow mushroom man shirt with the vertical lips, baby, vertical lips, which allow me to tell the truth at twice the speed of horizontal lips. You people know what Michael Fazio said to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You know the big giga ego, he had a harem. He wanted a harem. He always had a harem. Nico, you are not without sin, but we forgive you. But there's no need for forgiveness to the Popeye one, to the Mick Fishers, to the Michael Hunts, or to Yads. They kept my name out of this in the negative way. But Nico, by stating unequivocally at the two minute and 34, two hour and 34 minute, or two hour and 43 minute time stamp that no one had a harem. The island guy made that up. Oh my, Nico, you have been ego, ego brainwashed. You, you, Nico, you have been getting sleepy. Ego, sleepy Nico, sleep, sleepy Nico, Nico, and Nico talks about e beggars. Well, how many times has Nico put out a link for donos? How many times has Nico put out a link for donos? Many, many more times than anybody else except one other that's not in jail and one other that is in detention. Only Nico has put up a PayPal me or give me link more than the other two. So by mentioning my name as the island guy made up the story about somebody having a harem. You know, and I know, I didn't make up any stories. So, with that, of course, it's all YouTube fun until it interferes with one of your friends, right? That person, Miko, Miko, Mike's, who I blocked a long time ago, who the great Popeye one blocked a long time ago, who anybody with any sense of understanding of what that guy is, a long time ago, he said something dangerously negative about one of your friends, 
That's not allowed. But talking about Fazio on your page, that's allowed. That's a double standard. That's a double standard, Nico. And by you saying that I made up a story that that somebody had a harem and they never had a harem and it was just a made up story. I don't appreciate that at all. Not one bit. But it's your show. You can do that. Just like I can come on my show and tell the truth in a in a way that nobody else on YouTube could ever possibly do. I'll come up with a little skit, a little routine, a Johnny Car Johnny Carson feather in the cap type of thing. But you, by mentioning the island guy, may as well have said Michael Thomas Fazio made up a story that somebody had a harem. No, it's not a made up story. It's a fact of life. And I could show you the video with not just the audio, but I could give you the video with the faces, with the entire guy who goes around telling everybody how big his Koma Sikiyama is, how many women he hurt, damaged after making the love to them. I could give that all to you with video and audio. If you ask me nice, I'll throw it on a third-party channel and I'll give it to you. But to say that Michael Thomas Fazio, the island guy, made up a story, that's not fair. That's not fair at all. Because somebody might take you seriously that you know what the truth is. And the truth is that Flying Circus and Freebird and Scott Del Fuego and everybody else on YouTube knows that I have never been caught in a lie, ever. Ain't going to happen. Why would I lie about something like that? Do, do, do I have an ego? Nothing. If I had a big ego, would I dress up and look stupid like this? No, I do it for a reason. I do it to push my point across to you in a way that you cannot deny, ever. Go and watch Flying Circus's video. Everybody recorded it. Popeye recorded it. I recorded it. That lady, uh, Princess Anne, she's been begging for that copy of that video so she can go to the authorities with it. And I won't give it to her. Okay? But that's how much you allowed your friend, the Giga Ego, to hurt not only Princess Anne, but everybody else that he has in that video that he talks about. So that's okay for you. Princess Anne, let me just go over this with you. I don't consider her negative. I don't consider her evil. I've never considered her a liar. And yet, somebody destroyed her reputation, her good name in YouTube. And you think that's okay. I don't think it's okay. I don't think to destroy Princess Anne, a simple, not a highly educated Filipina, but a sweet girl that I've known for six years, you allow the Giga Ego to talk like that about an innocent Filipino and you defend him. That's wrong. Everybody that's going to watch this video knows that's wrong. You defend innocent Filipinas, but you want to have fun when you come to the Philippines by any means possible. And we won't get involved with you wanting to eat fruit and you want to have this, and you want to have that. That's sick to put that in on a public venue. For me, that's a sickness. A much, and to allow Princess Anne and her reputation to be destroyed, that's even more sick. What did Princess Anne ever do to anybody on YouTube? Even if it's true that the Giga Ego had 
a relationship with a woman. What business is that of anybody else's on YouTube? And to publicly talk about the private sexual encounter between him and another woman, whether it happened or not, Nico, you are defending that garbage on YouTube. So by knocking me down, by saying I made up a story about a harem, you know, I know, Popeye knows, Mick Fisher knows, Allo knows, Michael Hunt knows, everybody knows he did and does. But you talking about me in the negative, I don't cut any mustard with me at all. Not one bit. That you can somehow be portrayed but when Big Kevin did something to your friend, that was not okay. When you went and disagreed with Big Kevin, that's not okay. But for the Giga Ego to do it, it's okay. Why? Because this is why. Let's get this straight once and for all. This, the almighty sawbuck, the scuttle, the iron, the green, the cabbage. This is why you allow that to happen. Your soul doesn't flip. Flip this. You can't have it both ways. You can't talk about me being a liar when you can't prove it. And when I prove that the Giga Ego had a harem, I'm a liar. What more proof do you need? You want me to give Flying Circus another one of my six-hour videos? I'll do that. Just say the word. Let me go to the comments now. And we'll see if anybody has anything intelligent that they want to say. I do see there are comments. Miko, well said, Michael. Well, Miko has a, another channel. That guy has more channels than, than uh, MTV. Or more channels than... Uh, hello, Miko. Today, today, Miko is uh, highlighted. It's his first, the first comment on his, <laughs> Miko, Mike, Mix, Michael from Ireland, 37 years old. Michael Hunt. Mike, Mike Hunt. Is Mike Hunt in the house? Is Michael Hunt in the house? Let's get, uh, let's get over here. We have, we have, that must be Scott Del Fuego, let's see. Scott Del Fuego says that must be the explanation. They are hypnotized. <laughs> Scott Del Fuego, the ability to make his beneficiaries not just defend him. Oh, we are talking about the Giga Ego. The ability to make his beneficiaries, that would be people who receive sawbucks. Dollar bills, cash on demand. Openly defend him, but actually deny open videotape truths is truly e yeah, yeah, Ericky, Ericky, Ericky. Very good one, Scott. The wordsmithing. Never since the days of Mesner, mesmerized. Mesner, you people don't even know who Mesmer is. Mesmer, Mesmer. Mesmer was a great musician who mesmerized people. He mes, you are getting sleepy. Never since the days of Mesmer have the minds been so controlled like the Giga Ego. Ego. God, Michael Hunt is in the house. Mike Hunt. Michael Hunt. 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 Mike Hunt. Michael Hunt is in the house. Michael Hunt is in. Hey, Michael. 
You have turned into a chicken. Walk, 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 walk. They say in the Philippines, hello, free bird. The dong big pervert says flying circus. Flying circus, why don't you post your channel link so they can go there and see the Giga Ego. Listen to the Giga Ego shorts where he's talking about this, that, and the other thing. God almighty, 9.5, not 10 inches, 9.5. That's, look, dude, Giga Ego, wait, let, you know how you could tell? Let me show you something. You know how you could tell who we're talking about? It's hard to tell. Take a good look at me. Take a good look. Take a good look. Do I look like Inspector Clouseau? Inspector Clouseau. The Giga Ego. You have destroyed that woman, Princess Anne's, reputation on YouTube. You've caused a rift between her and her boyfriend. Whether it was true what you say you did with her or not, Eve, and, and the fact that nobody has come to her aid except myself and Flying Circus and Scott Del Fuego, the fact that you could destroy Princess Anne's reputation, whether it was true or not, to say it as a fact, for whatever reason, for views, for not for donations, that for sure. So what did you do it for? Other than your ego. You're a very, very, very disturbed human being. Probably right on the level of the guy who removed his channel this week. The, the two of you are, in my opinion, if you were to study the definition of malignant narcissists, the two of you fit into the definitive note, notes of what a malignant narcissist is. For you to be able to come on YouTube knowing that Nico, Nico said the guy on the island made up a story about you having a harem, and you know it's true. And to allow that on, yeah, you are a psychological genius. You are one of the smartest liars the best liars, the greatest deceivers anywhere in this world. You are right up there with Bill Clinton and Mr. Obama. You are a professional manipulator. So is Donald Trump. But you are on a level that's on YouTube. For what purpose does this serve you to destroy people's reputation? You know darn well you could never in a million years for no amount of money prove that you did not have a harem. But by you saying it, everybody believes it. That's sick. It's sick that you would do it. It's sick that you would persist on it. And for whatever reason, it's sick in your head to make it public. That's why I didn't meet you. I would never meet somebody with the sickness that I believe you have inside your head. Ever. Don't want to meet people like you. Don't want to sit down and surely I would not want to sit in a bar with you because every time I've ever watched you drink alcohol, you've lost your monkey mind. You did it the day that we were supposed to meet, you lost your monkey mind. You did it, and for three hours, you abused me because you lost your monkey mind because your brain can't handle alcohol and or whatever other chemicals you may have consumed, may or may not have consumed. I don't know, and I don't want to know you. And that's why I didn't meet you. 
And the fact that you flip-flop, you were going to come to Bahal and testify against the man who attacked me. You met the guy, befriended him a few hours later, gave him $250 in coffee money, and now you guys are buddies. And you gave him, as from what I could see, 700 U.S. dollars. Is there another reason that you became friends with him that doesn't have anything to do with money? Could it be some physical attraction that you two guys are both big men? I don't know. And that's why I didn't meet you, because I don't want to know any more about you than I already know. You lied. You and I had an agreement. You broke your agreement. Not on Big Kevin's channel, for the people out there that remember what happened. It wasn't on Big Kevin's channel that you broke your agreement. You did a two-hour video with your wife, and you broke our agreements in that live stream, and then you took it down and said it didn't exist. That is because you are a manipulating human being. You are what I would classify as on a level of politicians where they could look you straight in the face and lie straight into your face in a manner that will get you to almost believe them if you're not so smart, believe them if you're not smart at all, and know that they're lying if you're very smart, but you let it go. That's what everybody does with you. They let it go. Because you give out the greenbacks, the dollars, the cash, the scotto, the iron, the cabbage. You buy people's souls. And that's the bottom line. Mike Hunt is in the house. Michael Hunt is in the house. Let's go back. I need glasses. Not these glasses. With these glasses, I'll never be able to see that. What's? Where's my other glass? I lost my glasses. Wherefore are thou my glasses? They're not there. Oh, this is the problem. This is a problem. Ah, oh, here they are, right here. Okay. Michael Hunt. What What is happening to me? Is this the magic? The Carmack. There's the feather of the Carmack. The Carmack. The Carmack. Kreskin. The great de de Siva, de Siva, de Siva. Amazing, Randy, or was it Randell? Flying Circus, good one, Flying Circus. How to donate to Yad's Feeding the Hungry Kids? I kind of want to, says Scott Del Fuego. Uh, you could get her link up on the page and post it. You're welcome to do that. She has a great cause, although she has some questionable friends, that's for sure. Freebird, they all just take advantage of the greenbacks. That's true. That is really true. Thank you for saying that, Freebird. I saw a show on Nico. Nico. It appears that not just hate speech and lies, but actual truth calling out mongering by the payoff and chief gets deleted so everywhere I ever posted and that includes Yad's Amodia blogs channel everywhere each time three times only once on Yad's channel and twice on um, Popeye's channel my my comments got deleted or I never saw them, okay? A little long time ago. But but Yadza's channel was just a few weeks ago. So you, you have a guy that's deleting comments, and he says he's, he's a free speech advocate. That's nonsense. He's not a free speech advocate. I saw, I was in the city yesterday because I had no internet. We have had no water here for three days. The pump that pumps for all of east of the airport, all of west of the airport, 70,000 people, the pump broke. 
70,000 people are without water for three days. Now, I have bottles of water, but I had to go to the city to buy a load for my camera so I could do this stream because yesterday we had no electric. We had no internet, and I had no load. But anyway, moving back, I have posted on Yadza's channel, and they say that you never post. I posted there. Whoever removed my comment, for whatever reason, it never made it to the show. It happened on Popeye's show as well. I don't know who's removing my comments, and I don't really care, because I have my own show. Miko. Hello, Michael. Now, Miko, you're the man that you were the one that made the threats. Michael Hunt made it real clear that he knows who you are. You live in Ireland and you're 37 years old. I don't know why you would threaten somebody's life, but you can't do it here. Michael, you need a two-piece Jollibee chicken. Hey, that's a great idea. Mike, Michael Hunt. Mike Hunt. Michael Hunt is in the house, baby. Michael Hunt. Hello, everyone, says Freebird. I am a chicken. I cluck says Scott the Fuego. There is no harem. Big E goes down. Big E does not have a harem. He never mongered in the Philippine bars. That's probably true. I would say he was not a monger. The fact that he harbors the mentality of mongers does not make him a monger. That's true. Harem equals greenbacks equals big gigo, giga ego, says Freebird. Honestly, that crew runs on pure hypocrisy and untruthful energy. I saw that as well. You know that Nico, Nico, Nico said, let me, let's clear this up, Nico. Nico said, this was funny. Now, this, this was a funny thing. You people that give the e-beggars money. And they don't give you anything. You should give me, being Nico, you should give me money. Because I bring you the truth about the Philippines. Nico, I've watched several hours of your videos. I've never seen anything from your channel regarding the Philippines ever. Other than the fact that that you want to date somebody's ex-girlfriend, which shows you the kind of people and the mentality of the people in the Philippines. I mean, I would never actively want to chew somebody else's bubblegum, as the Del Fuego posts it. The Del Fuego says dating another man's woman is like taking a piece of bubblegum off the back of a chair you see in a train station. I like that. I'll never forget that. B admitted, he bragged, he admitted it. He did. He bragged it in Flying Circus's videos. So, Nico, Nico, this is directly to you. What have, for you, first of all, everybody knows that Aloe is my friend, but I will destroy Aloe's uh, the post that you made about Aloe yesterday, not, it wasn't you, it was Popeye. Popeye said Aloe is the only person that brings truth to the Philippines genre and Philippines-related content. Now, that's not true. And Aloe, Aloe would agree with me. Aloe has given you some videos of Makate Philippines, where you see Rolls Royces and Porsches and Audis. And, and you can buy dinners in little little boxes for $18 a dinner. I think those four dinners cost Allo $60 or $70. And they were just a few pieces of fish in, in one thing. Lewis Pagan Ponce is in the house. Allo gave you a few videos of driving up a road and talked about the history of the Philippines. And that is what you, Nico, consider... I mean, that, not, that's what Popeye considers the best content on YouTube. You know it's not true. I mean, Popeye knows it's not true. 
I mean, there's, there's, Popeye is not delusional. He's actually quite ra rational when it comes to what's on YouTube and what's not. But to say that only Allah, you guys are building up your own fanfare. That's okay. But to say that only Allah has brought YouTube content, there's hundreds of us with thousands of videos of all over the things to do in the Philippines. Allah has done 20 videos with a couple of fancy restaurants that most of us couldn't even afford or would not spend their money in and drove up a highway that we're never going to drive up through Clark Air Force Base. He's not giving us any content about the Philippines. He's a funny guy, and he's my good friend. But content about the Philippines? No, that doesn't hold any water, Popeye. But that's okay that you want to build them up. I like Allo, too. I think everybody should subscribe to your page, Popeye, Yadza's page, so they can give children money. And I think they should all subscribe to Allo's page as well. And even Nico. But Nico still doesn't take advice. We all said a long time ago for Nico to start posting live streams every day so he could get his hours up, so he could get monetization. Did he do it? No. Instead, he comes on and talks about how he doesn't want to fight anybody, but if you bring it to him, he'll bring it back to you. Every show, Nico, three or four times an hour in every show and knowing that you probably don't really want to get into a fight with anybody why would you want to you're on vacation but why do you bring it up every time you have you you should really think about listen to your show that i don't want to i don't want to but if you come look every show nico that is not content Okay, it's not going to get you views. It's not getting you views. Yeah, you had 40 people on your show yesterday because Popeye was there. Try having a show by yourself without talking about fighting people and see how that goes. Your shows of the beach, your shows with the family, your shows with your daughter and the, the, the granddaughter, those are what people are interested in. Not listening to you how bad you are and how you're going to bring it to them. You've said it enough times. You should think about stopping that conversation. In my opinion. But to call me a liar, that's not allowed. I've told you people, there's a few things that are not allowed. You're not allowed to talk about Daisy May. Because she's never done anything to anybody. She's never said a word about anybody. She's not part of YouTube. And she's my good friend. You're not allowed to talk about my friends. Period. You're not allowed to call me a liar unless you can prove it. And nobody's ever done that. And by you saying the island guy made up a story about a harem, we know that's not true. So retract it. Edit it out of the video like you wanted Big Kevin to edit the hate speech from Miko out of his video. Or don't talk about it at all. But don't call me a liar, dude. That ain't, that ain't flying with nobody. That just makes you look like a fool. Nobody has ever proven that I'm a liar. And the guy who calls me a liar all the time, have you noticed? He took his channel down out of embarrassment out of maybe got a strike, maybe got a strike for hate speech, maybe somebody flagged his videos, maybe a lawyer told him to knock it off. Who knows why he took the channel down? That's the only guy that ever called me a liar, and then he said that I had Skype saxophonism with a guy named Warren. He can't prove that. It never happened. It's not provable. And I would have did that show yesterday. But we had no internet, no electric, and no water. Okay? So, you people out there that are going to call Michael Thomas Fazio a liar, it ain't going to happen. It's never going to happen. You can't prove it. I don't know why you do it. It bothers me that you do it. But I will do... I have the ability to put my own shows on. And I will. And by you saying the island guy made up a story about the harm, I didn't make up any darn stories. Flying Circus has it on his channel.
go to Flying Circus, see the truth. I have it on in one of my storage accounts on another channel. I have it with the faces in the bars, in the restaurants, with the girls, all the girls, including somebody that Frank that Scott calls Hornico. Oh, and you've re and you're removing Scott Del Fuego's comments from the Nico's Experience show as well. So not only is Big Cabin doing it, not only did Yads do it, but now Nico is doing it all to protect the Giga Ego of free speech. It's not free speech when you remove their comment. Do you see anybody's comment on my page that said something negative that wasn't derogatory to the point where it had to be removed? I don't remove comments. You see that piece of garbage allowed on my show? The one that calls me a liar all the time? No, because he's not allowed on my show because he's a piece of garbage. I'm not going to allow some piece of garbage to come on and interrupt my train of thought. You guys are a trip. All right, let's get back here. He has heard all that before. Of course he has, Freebird. Yes, Flying Circus, that is the same guy that removed the comments, that doesn't have a harem, that tries to pull girls' pants down on live streams. That's the same guy. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, Scott the Fuego, yeah. That's so humorous to show some girl's pants pulled down on the dance floor to brag about sexually tearing women up and hospitalizing them to buy young girls virtue because you have Western cash. That's what he does. And you're defending what, what I would call the original manga, the giga ego. That's what I would think. That he def why he defends these people like Barry Jordan and my attacker. Why do you think, unless there's another nefarious reason, maybe they have some sort of fantasies about one another? I don't know. Maybe, but why would he defend all of these negative people? Why would he destroy Princess Anne's reputation? Why do we have... Uh, Scott Del Fuego says, if you, know, if you don't know something is wrong, you certainly don't have to outright lie about it. That's true. But that's what you people are allowing to happen. You're allowing people to outright lie about whether or not I'm telling you the truth. Prove that he didn't have a harem. Go to Flying Circus's videos and see that the video, hey, look, I got 53 hours of that garbage. I'll just give Flying Circus another two or three hour video and he'll bring up more stuff with faces. The problem is that the free speech guy will flag the video. You don't think that my videos got demonetized because somebody's flagging them? It could be the liar in Northern Cebu and it could be Mr. Freedom of Speech. They all got remonetized, all of them, every one of them. But somebody flagged every one of my videos. Now, and Mr. Freedom of Speech is removing comments. So what makes you think that it's a big jump from removing comments to flagging people's channel? Especially when it comes to him. He had a harem. He always had a harem. He bragged about having a harem. 14 women, 34 women, including the new one, the concubine. And that's the truth. But if you want to defend it, defend it. But just say it's okay for him to have a harem. Don't say he never had a harem because he had a harem. I don't know what's so hard about that. A father would not be happy to see his daughter's pants like that. That's true. Flying circus. No more six-hour videos. I'm still sleeping. 
Yeah, that was a six-hour video that he posted. Flying Circus got that all out of just one video. I have 26 videos from the Giga Ego. And some of them are two hours, some of them are three hours, some of them are from when she was around, and some of them are just in discotheques. I'll just give Flying Circus another video. I don't care if he falls asleep into a deep... You are getting sleepy. You are getting sleepy. Sleepy. Ego. Your ego is being destroyed. It is my intention to destroy your ego. 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 You are getting your ego. 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 Your ego is being destroyed. We are in the ego. Ego. You are getting ego. Ego. Go. Go. Hey, look. I don't have all day. I got other stuff to do. If you guys didn't figure it out yet, I want to thank Michael Hunt for being man, being a real man, to stop by and say hello, knowing where I was going with this. Mike Hunt, Mike Hunt, Michael Hunt is a good man. Mike Hunt. Has anybody seen Mike Hunt lately? Michael Hunt, where far art thou, Michael Hunt? Has anybody, is Mike Hunt out in the parking lot? That was one funny skit, Popeye. Got to give you credit for that. So going back, let's get this. This stuff is starting to make me sweat. Let's get back to uh, reality here. Going back to reality. The amazing Karnak is disappearing. Man, my head is starting to sweat like a... Now, now I look good, right? I got my hair, even though my hairline is starting to recede. It's back three-eighths of an inch since I was in high school. And it's starting to go gray, too. Oh, you know, Popeye, let's talk about Popeye for a minute. Popeye is actually quite quite a fair man. Popeye has not said a single negative word about me, even though he could. He's allowed to. I mean that's he's he's certainly allowed to to say his mind because he's he's actually quite a fair now this is I'm being serious about this. He's actually quite fair about um not not state, like he doesn't say Fazio's crazy, because he knows Fazio's not crazy. I might be a little eccentric. That That's true. But he knows that I'm not crazy. And he knows I tell the truth. But he has to look out for his friend Nico. And that's okay. I said that a long time ago, that if you're com comrades with somebody, and Popeye and Nico are comrades, then you defend them. And you defend them to whatever level you want to defend. But notice that Popeye has never said a bad word about Michael Thomas Fazio. You should pay attention to what I just said. Because in the back of Popeye's mind and in the forefront of what Popeye knows to be true, he knows what I'm saying is true. He's not going to verbally agree with it. He's not going to allow any real serious derogatory stuff about his friend, and that's what a good friend should do, not allow that kind of stuff. Now, Yads, we could talk. So Popeye, and Popeye has a course on YouTube. Popeye's purpose on YouTube is to collect money for the children of the Philippines. So if you guys have a couple of extra dollars, some green, and you want to help feed the children of the Philippines, you can go, somebody could post Yadza's 
channel link. I'm, I'm okay with that. And you can post Yads' channel link. And all of that money goes to feed the children. Michael Hunt, Mick Fisher, Yads, Amodi of Logs, and Popeye are earnestly collecting money to feed the children. And Christmas is coming. So what better time of the year is there to do that? But as far as donations, Nico had one thing right. That giving money to that worthless blogger named Big Cabin is a waste of not only money, but it, he will spend it on something wasteful. Never has he ever shown anybody anything that he's done with the money. Okay, so without you giving him money, he could never exist in this world. He'd be in a homeless shelter. Now, he says he gave money to his children. I don't know. I never saw any receipts for that. But that's okay whether he gave money to them or not. But one thing you will know when you give money to Yads, that money's going to feed the children. When you give money to Popeye, that money's going to feed the children. I don't think there's a better reason to give money than to feed the children. I don't think there is a better reason. Now, unless somebody is sick and really needs money, but the children are the innocents of the world, which they have. Look, I live here. I look at these children. They have nothing. These children in the field, they have nothing. They will play with an old tire from a bicycle pushing a tire up and down a hill all day. They don't have kites. They don't have wagons like we had the little red wagon. They don't have bicycles. They don't have roller skates. They have virtually nothing. And they don't really have a lot of good food. So giving money to Popeye and Yads and Mick Fisher's Endeavors and Michael Hunt probably as well. I think that's a great thing to do. I'm not being facetious. I'm being serious. But given, but Nico says that giving money to Big Kevin is a waste of money. Well, Nico, what are you going to do with your money? You're going to come to the Philippines and spend it on little girls. <laughs> For me, nobody, there's no video from no matter what time you go back in my history. There's no video of me ever mongering even one time. Did I date a couple of women? I did. Always with the intention of having a steady girlfriend and possibly a long-term relationship, maybe even marriage. Didn't work out like that. But I never dated a woman and handed a woman money. Okay? You guys are going to have to come to the Philippines and hand them cash on the barrel head. That, to me, is not a reason to ask for money to get to the Philippines. So you, by you saying that your channel is the channel that gives people information about the Philippines and the only channel that people should donate is your channel and you have never done anything with your money. And your intention to collect money is to come to the Philippines and date other people's girlfriends? That's okay. But you posting videos about the Philippines, please show me. Because I don't see anything about the Philippines on your channel. Yeah, there was a video I think you had of a, a pedicab. Or was that you? I'm not even... Well, that might have been Mr. MJ the Flipper. But I don't know. I don't see videos about the Philippines with you. And, and, and when you make a blatantly bold statement, you're coming to the Philippines to meet other people's girlfriends, and you're collecting money for this? That's crazy stuff, dude. Chewing somebody else's bubblegum, as Scott Del Fuego stated, is not my idea of a trip to the Philippines. Now, 
when Popeye said that only I'll post video, I have more videos than any other YouTuber anywhere in this world about the Philippines. Now, there's a couple of guys that are way more famous, but they don't have videos. I have thousands of videos about the Philippines, but I don't get any views because of my political content. And that's okay. I don't care about that. But to say that you have more content about the Philippines and only give you money, that's ridiculous. Let's face the facts. In my opinion, you have nothing in regards to the Philippines. I have a video I could, many jeepneys, many dive sites, many beaches, many islands. <coughs> many places in Palawan, Sabang Beach in Palawan, the Underground River, the, the Above Ground River tour. Twice I did the above ground river and three times the below ground river. Videos of the different hotels in Cebu, Astaka Bay, the Golden Prince, and, and uh, several other hotels. Uh, I have videos of that circle, um, carbon, carbon, the carbon market. The place is a dump. I went there once. One video of the carbon market is all any human being. They only need to go there to experience it. I was there for an hour and a half. I was in Mangrove, Mango Square. Do I have videos of Mango Square? No! I wouldn't put a video of that dump up. Even if I made one, I wouldn't put a video of that dump up. That place is disgusting. That place is for disgusting people. That place is for people with no morals at all. Nothing. Zero. Zero. Carbon market is a slum, it's a dump, it's a disgusting place to be. They had women there for 200 pesos. We're walking into the, we were sitting on an outside trellis, trellis-like area. Me and Dirty Bob, that was the guy's name, Dirty Bob. And I sat down and he's going, wait, it's going to get better. It was about, it was not quite dark yet. And I'm going, Bob, the place is, this place is filthy. Yeah, yeah, but don't, don't worry about it. The women will start to come when it gets dark. And they did. And every one of them had at least three teeth. Every one of them. Some of them had four teeth. One of them had three teeth on the top and three on the bottom. That place is, a, is a, just a disgusting, despicable place, the carbon market. That was the only time I ever went to Mango Square. And I was there for an hour and a half, and maybe an hour. And, and it was within walking distance of the hotel I was staying in, the Golden Prince. Let's, fa let's face facts. You want to know the truth about the Philippines? I've been to Dumaguete place is a slum. Dumaguete proper is a slum. Dumaguete proper, the boardwalk, is a slum. Dumaguete proper is a, a house of ill refute in an open air environment. You walk on the boardwalk along the pier at Dumaguete and you might get propositioned once or three or four times walking one way. But when you walk back, then you're going to get propositioned by every working girl on the boardwalk because they know that you are looking to hook up. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Is it worth risking your life for ten dollars? When you walk into a restaurant to have dinner in Dumaguete, the foreigners walk up to you and say, did you meet any girls from this college or that college? Because it's a college town. These are guys that are 60 and 70 years old wanting to have conversations about meeting girls that are 18 or 19 that are working to pay their way through college. That's the Philippines. That's why nobody went against the mongerism that appeared with the Giga Ego.
Because people understand that that way of life in the Philippines is accepted. And that's okay if that's accepted, but it's not for me. And when I brought it to the surface, you all made fun of me. You, you make me out to be a liar. That's never going to happen. Now, where I stayed at the Golden Prince Hotel, best food, best chefs, best Friday night buffet in all of Cebu, even better than 101. Not such a wide variety of food, but the best food I ever ate in a buffet was at the Golden Prince. They had fried lobster. At the time, they had fried galamar and hot sauce with lemon seasoning. They had king crab legs. It was a great place. And it was a place that was the most well-known hotel in Cebu for foreigners to come and meet young girls. That was what it was for. I didn't know that when I got a room there because I needed a place to stay. When I first got to the Philippines, I wanted a doorman, security, and I wanted aircon, and I wanted room service. That's what I got for $990. It was a 39,000 pesos, excuse me, a month. Came out to be like 1,200 bucks a month. You got free breakfast buffet, all the shampoo, all the toothpaste, toothbrushes, clean towels and bed sheets twice a week. Somebody came in and swept the floor twice a week. Had a refrigerator, air con, hot and cold water. You paid extra for the water and extra for the electric. So it cost me about 1200 bucks a month. And to get situated in the Philippines, I think it's the best way possible because there's people from all over the world. But they came to the Golden Prince to meet little girls from Cebu that go to the colleges in Cebu. That's their plan. That was never my plan. I dated the girl that I met online the year before. I dated one other girl, a Muslim girl, who was a sweetheart. I dated two women. I was there three months, and I left on March 15th. I got there. I did spend New Year's at the Golden Prince, so I spent 93 days in the Golden Prince. January, February, March, because two weeks I had to leave during the, during the Chinese festival. I spent 93 days there. And I had a great time. And if you want to meet people from all over the Philippines, and if you want to date little girls, Nico, go to the Golden Prince. There'll be nothing but people just like you. Hundreds of people just like you. And they'll all give you the names of the websites and the girls they dated last week. And it's a secure hotel with air con, clean linen, toothpaste, shampoo, and the best food you're ever going to eat. It's an all-in-one stop right across from the Ayala Mall. You can take them shopping for a phone. Although you said you don't do that, take my word. You want to be a manga, you want to go to the Golden Prince. You don't need to go stay at somebody's house or some dumpy little room somewhere. In, in, in some nowhere. Go to the Golden Prince. Live it up. 1500 bucks a month, I guess it is now. Learn how to be a proper manga. And then when the girls that you call them up on the phone, when you tell them you're staying at the Golden Prince, they go. Because they know the Golden Prince is a manga haven. If that's what you want to do, then do it with a little bit of style. These other guys are right, living a five-star lifestyle staying in some dump. The Golden Prince. That I think I paid 39,000 pesos a month in 2014. I don't know what it is now. But that's where you want to be. But don't, don't say that you want to have... Go and meet somebody's girlfriend that you don't know. Chewing somebody else's bubblegum, dude. That is nasty. Let's go back over here. The big ego, Miko, 
says the big ego eats from the trough of Zion. I like that, Nico. In fact, I'm going to post that as a uh, as the as the pinned comment, the trough of Zion, and Zion. Let's not get involved with that. Thanks, Nico. The big ego eats from the trough of Zion. Let's go back up here. Ah, the big pervert says flying circus. Let's go back. I'm gonna. I'm back at the comments. I saw a show on Nico. It appears that just not that not just hate speech or lies, but actual truth, calling out mongery. Well, let's just, let's turn this around. Calling out mongering by the payoff is. Chief, payoff in chief gets deleted. That's true. Hit that thumbs up, says Scott Del Fuego. Uh, we're way beyond thumbs up. Scott Del Fuego, I'm, I am a chicken. I cluck. There is no harem. Big ego does not have a harem. He never mongered in the Philippines bars. Whether he did or not, stating that he never had a harem is the problem, Scott. Harem equals greenbacks equals big ego. Honestly, that crew runs on pure hypocrisy and untruthful energy. That's true. The truth will set you free, as the great Scott Bennett said. Thank you, Miko. Defending is one thing, but when you deny openly that which is utterly truthful, it means that you must be very ashamed of your behavior. And that's what I see it as as well. He's ashamed at what he's done. Now, proof of that is all those videos he made at the Bozo Bar or Geezer's Bar. I forgot the name of the bar. But he made all those videos passing those women around and then he took him down when when uh, expat trash came on the scene. He took all. I have them all. I have every one of them. I could turn this around. Let me. Let's go through the comments. I have every one of those videos. Yeah, that's so humorous. To show girls pants pulled down on the dance floor, to brag about sexually tearing women up and hospitalizing them to buy young girls virtue because you have Western money. Let's go down here a little bit. Flying Circus put the links out for the Pervalert video series. Just giving my two cents, says Tanrat7. Malignant narcissism is real. I've been a victim of malignant narcissists. Of course, and this giga ego, in my opinion, is one of the biggest, most malignant narcissists on YouTube. Prove to me that it's not true. And I will give you a video. Right now, I'm going to post the video of a malignant narcissist. And at the 3 minute and 33 second mark, I think it was, right here. Right here. Okay, uh, three minutes and 52 seconds, excuse me. Utterly dedicated to preserving, now this is about malignant narcissists. Utterly dedicated to preserving their self-image of perfection. Malignant narcissists are unceasingly engaged in the effort to maintain the appearance of moral purity. So by Yad's and Popeye and Nico, giving the Giga Ego a free pass, you are allowing him to maintain the appearance of moral purity. And that's written by a, a man who wrote this book, Scott Peck. Never heard of him before. Came across this video yesterday. Memorized a few timestamps. And I'm going to post this link. 
to malignant narcissists. This is the defining video of the Giga Ego. This is him. This is the other nutcase in northern Cebu as well that said Fazio is trying to make me look like something I'm not. I'm not trying to make anybody look like what they're not. I'm showing people what you people are, in fact. You people are, in fact, a bunch of malignant, psychopathic narcissists. Not all of you, but most of you, certainly. Okay? You cannot be a guy that goes out and offers a girl $100 to be with her for an hour and a half and not think there's something wrong with that, that's narcissism. If you understand it is wrong, then it's at least being honest. But you people go around talking about this mongering crap like it was a way of, 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 of self-righteousness and goodness. It's a sick, deplorable, disgusting mindset especially in today's world. Anyone that lies so brazenly as to deny big egos talking, taking advantage of Philippines girls for his Western riches, that he had a self-described harem, obviously nothing they say is believable. And that goes, he's, Scott is directing that at the Nico fella. Come on, man. You're going to defend somebody. Defend them with something you could defend them with. We have some trolls. Karen Honeycutt. What's happening, Karen? We're talking about malignant narcissists and psychopaths that, that rent women when they come to the Philippines and beg for money, throwing their PayPal link up every 10 or 15 minutes and all over the channel begging for money to come to the Philippines so they could buy little girls. That's what we're talking about, Karen Honeycutt. Sing the Mushroom Man song. <laughs> hey, PA Truck is in the house. PA Truck, I, I uh, thank you for stopping by, PA Trucker. I heard that you uh, abused the other day. That's not right. And, and again... If you don't have proof that somebody did something or said something, it, it's really not right that what they did to P.A. Trucker. P.A. Trucker and I have talked about this. I don't really believe that what was said about P.A. Trucker is the truth. At the time, when you hear something for the first time before you speak with somebody about it, you're not sure. But to go around and continue that conversation about P.A. Trucker, not good. Not right. Scott says hello, Mark. PA Trucker says hello, Scott. DNC Human Circus is in the house. I think it is a chicken Halloween costume. So I'm going to show you the Giga Egos videos that I have on this page, but I'm not going to show you the links. Michael the Mystic is the Mystic Hypnotizer. The mesmerizer of the ages. The, the gaga ego man of mind control. I stand corrected. Well, let's get this. Let's get the truth, the justice, and the American way. You are getting sleepy. You are getting sleepy. You people have tried to make me, especially that, that nutcase in northern Cebu, who, by the way, took his channel down again. He took his channel down again. I, I don't flag his videos. I, I did. What I did was he had some video links from my channel up. I made them private. He likes to talk about the size of men's appendages. I could never... He, he tried to talk to me many, many times. I don't talk to him. I don't respond to him. I don't have, I don't answer his mail. I don't talk to men 
that talk about the size of other men's appendages unless they're bragging about something and I think it's in a sick, disgusting, subhuman manner on YouTube. That Then we talked about that. Flying Circus talked about it. To, to brag. What Scott Del Fuego just said. That's crazy stuff, man. I, I don't have a single problem with you guys coming to the Philippines and, and meeting girls. I have no problem with that at all. This is where you people are wrong about my moral turpitude. I have no problem with you coming to the Philippines to meet girls. What I have a problem with is you talking about it like it's like it's something that you should be proud of. I think that's the kind of thing you keep to yourself. There's certain things you just keep to yourself. Now, I don't do it, so moralistically, I could criticize you for it, and that's what I do. I, If I did do it, you would have seen it. Somebody would have a video of it, but I never did it. I don't have videos from Mangrove Square because Mangrove Square was only there once for an hour and a half. Wouldn't do a video. The place is a slum. It's a dump. I was in the a slum in uh, Bacolod. Do you see videos of a slum in Bacolod? The, the guy who lives in northern Cebu, he's shown us videos of places just like the place I was in in Bacolod. I would be embarrassed to make a video of the place that I visited in Bacolod. It's the video of the girl when I'm walking into a kind of like a, a small jeepney and the video is upside down. That's the girl I went there to meet. But to get to her house, you had to walk through Squala. I wouldn't make a video of Squala. I would never post a video of Squala. Not the kind of squall I saw in Bacolod or the kind I saw that guy post in Cebu. That was squall in Bacolod. That was the worst living conditions I ever saw in my life. Would I post that on YouTube? No. Did I make a video of it? No. Would I ever make a video of it? Maybe if I was doing a documentary and I could bring something to the people that I was going to exploit with a video, but I'm not, I don't want to exploit those people. I want somebody like Yad's Emoti of Logs to walk through an area of squalor and say, look, give me some super chat so I can help feed these children that are living in squalor for the Christmas vacation. That is acceptable to me. But me as a foreigner to make a video of the type of poor barrios or whatever they call them, squalas, whatever it's called, I would never do it. I'm not a member of the Philippines community. I have no right to exploit those poor people like that. I don't have any right to say that I hired this girl for the night, like that moron from uh, the black guy. Uh, from Thailand did a few weeks ago. Look at this beautiful blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl I got. Blonde, whatever it was that he had. He only paid a he he made a he only paid one hundred fifty dollars a night for a girl. That's sick stuff. That's sick. It was seven thousand pesos a night. For what reason would you do that? Why would you give a girl one hundred fifty dollars? You know. For a few minutes of entertainment? Why would you do that? That's just crazy stuff. You know, I had a, a boss. Everybody in, in America. Everybody that lives in New York. Lenny's Pizzeria. Lenny's Clam Bars. Tony Roma's Ribs. Rib House. Okay. Now, my boss, Joe DeCandia, the original Lenny's Pizzeria at 1855 Nostrand Avenue... He met presidents and the Pope. 
and the heads of state all over the world because he was hooked up, really hooked up. He was making $50,000 a day, more money than anybody you ever met in your entire life, including Trump. Okay, he had 51 Lenny's Pizzerias that he was 51% partner. He had 26. Each one of those pizzerias did several thousand dollars a day. And pizza money is all cash. Okay, so if you made, if you did $10,000 worth of business, my store would do $10,000 worth of business a day. That would be $6,000 a day profit. He collected $3,000 of that 6000 Okay? And he had 50, 51 pizzerias. And my store was a small store. Okay, no, 1855 Notion Avenue used to do 20000 a day. Okay, so he made... And on that on that day he made seven, eight thousand dollars a day. So fifty times say five. He was making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars sometimes in a day on a good day. He has video pictures of him with President Nixon. He has pictures of him with Ronald Reagan. He has pictures of him with the Pope. He had a office at the, in the basement of most of his more successful businesses. And he would date women that he'd pay $5,000 a day for. No problem. To him, 5000 was chump change. He would give, if he ordered a, a cake for somebody's birthday, he'd give them, he'd pay $10 for the cake from Sugar Bun Bakery, and he'd give the driver a $100 tip. Money was nothing. Making ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a day. But he was a very, very rich man. And he did that. So I saw this from the end of the spectrum for five thousand dollars for a woman is chum change to him. But then my boss, who only owned the one store at one six one fifty nine oh one Cross Bay Boulevard, my Lenny's Pizzeria, or 16001. It was right on the corner of 160th Avenue. He had one store in Queens, and he was a partner in Staten Island. He might have been making 3000 a day. Okay, he was a pauper in the Lenny's Clam Bar business. But he, he described it like this. He had a gomada. My boss had a gamada. He's Vinny Cerrone. He's long dead now. And so is my good friend Joseph, his son, and maybe even his sister Serena Cerrone. So he had he had a gamada on... Uh, I was the only person allowed to deliver to his gamada. And a gamada is a girlfriend, but it's a steady girlfriend. And he had a wife, and he had his children working in the restaurant. I taught the kids how to open clams. I taught them how to bread the, the veal cutlets and the chicken cutlets. I taught them how to open, um, to peel the shrimp. I taught the kids because they were a few years younger than me. But he had a gamada, and somebody said to him one night, we were having, we were eating shrimp parmesan. He allowed everybody to have shrimp parmesan, and he brought out like eight or nine trays of shrimp parmesan with spaghetti and meatballs in the tray and we were all eating at the counter where they make the pizza and I was on the other side of the counter and I don't, I don't remember I think it was I think it was a guy named Kevin who said to him how many girlfriends do you have Vinny because we were talking about real stuff it could have been the holidays he said just one he said how many girlfriends can you have and and everybody thought he had a lot because Joe had a lot. Joe had women all over the world. He had women. And Vinny said, what could you do? He said, yeah, you get on top of them and you bump them around a little bit and you go like this. And it's all over. 
12 seconds and you're done. How many girlfriends do you want? i never forget that. Never forget that. To this day, Kevin Trainer was his name. Kevin Trainer was the guy who asked him. He was an older guy, maybe 10 years older. He was a driver. Mike was there, the waiter, Mike from Lenny's Pizzeria. His son, Joseph, was probably there. Serena, the daughter, was not there. It was Michael, myself, Marco. Uh, Marco was the head chef. Louie was another chef. He was there. And um, there was another, we called him, uh, there was another older guy. I forgot his name. He was like 80 years old. He, he, he washed dishes. Me and him washed most of the dishes. But he also did the breadcrumbs and stuff like that. But then he explained it in a way that, hey, how many girlfriends can you have? You get on top of them, you bump them around a little bit, and you go like this. 12 seconds, it's all over. So that guy from Thailand, he paid 147,000 pesos for a girl to bump uglies with her for about 12 seconds. And he kept her for two or three days. That's sick stuff. That's crazy stuff. So you'll e-beg, saying I'm the only person that you should give money to because I'm going to go to the Philippines and I'm going to show you what life in the Philippines is. And what do you want to do when you get here? You want to bump uglies with somebody else's bubble gum. I wouldn't give you a dime. That's why I stopped going to your channel. But then I would have never mentioned you again. Had you not said what you said yesterday, I told you people, and I've told you more than once don't talk about Daisy May, don't call me a liar unless you can prove it, don't mention my name in the negative that I'm a liar because I'm going to refute it, I'm going to rebuttal it, and I just did, and I did it well. Go ahead, do it again, and I'll do it again. I promise. I'm not, I'm done with it for now, but you guys do it again and I'll do it again. I don't care. If that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. I am not going to allow you to talk about Daisy May, who's an innocent woman, and my friend. I'm not going to allow you to talk about any of my friends. I'm not going to allow you to call me a liar. And the guy that keeps calling me a liar, in not such a long time from now, maybe he'll have that opportunity to call me a liar to my face. I don't think he will do it. I think self-preservation and the yellow streak that runs up and down his spine will prevent him from getting involved with anything more than some verbage at a distance. But he's welcome to do so. See, he hears differently. He hears that all of a sudden somebody wants to fight him in the parking lot. Nobody ever said that. Nobody ever challenged him to a brawl in the parking lot. But what he hears as a malignant, narcissistic type personality, what he hears when you say you put up a challenge, a legal, documented challenge, he hears that you want to fight him in the parking lot because that's what malignant narcissists hear. They hear what they want to be the truth. And that video of malignant narcissists that I put up, I suggest you all watch that video because it is the Giga Ego. It is the guy in northern Cebu. It is the mindset of malignant narcissism in a nutshell. And with words. Other people have said the same thing, but this video. But I'm telling my glasses. Where's my glasses? Where are my glasses? Ah, I lost them again. I get so wrapped up in telling truth saying, maybe they fell. Nope, they didn't fall. Okay. Not here. Not there. Not there. Okay, let's see what we got here. 
Let's see what we got here. Here they are. Found them. So, let's go back and uh, I'll give you another saying from the malignant. Uh, let's go. We have comments here. Scott is giving me smiley faces. Oh, look. It was Fazio all along. Oh, yeah, I was hiding. I hide from the truth. You know, you people out there, you think that you can... See, you know what that pig said to me? That malignant, psychopathic narcissist said to me? He said on Big Kevin's show that his pigs live in a cleaner environment than me. And I still talk to him when he came to my house. I could have did something else altogether, but I didn't. That man is a psychopathic, malignant, narcissist, liar, deceiver, and yet you people follow him around like the Pied Piper. And if that's what you want to do, then you do that. And I know why two of you are doing it, because he's three of you are doing it, because he's giving you money. That's the only reason you would do that. You, he's given you thousands of dollars, probably, in all probability, my best guess. Trips to the Philippines. He gives away trips to the Philippines. He offers people free rides, free airfare back to the United States if the person allows his future fiancé, his future wife, to become part of his harem. Go ahead and say he didn't say that. I dare you to say that he didn't ask the fellow that's in detention if that fellow would allow his future fiancé wife to be part of his harem. I dare you to say it. Say it. Somebody say it. Somebody say it now and mean it. Say that he never said it. He said to the guy in detention while he was behind bars, do you think it would be okay if your fiancé, and he used her name, becomes part of my harem? And the guy behind the bars, oh, he was okay with that. As long as she didn't get involved with her cousin. Some ridiculous nonsense like that. You people are sick. You think I'm crazy because I put on masks? And crazy glasses, you people are mentally, psychopathically deranged, malignant, narcissist, whatever, to that umpteenth end of the spectrum, psychos, to believe that you have the right to e-beg for money, to come to the Philippines, to meet somebody else, and chew on their bubblegum. That's crazy stuff, man. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna meet his ex bubblegum. What is wrong with you to even say it and then to advertise it and then to get the link to the girl's page and then to go there and ask her? That's crazy stuff, dude. You don't see it as being crazy because you want the views. To get views like that, I would never do it. I will talk about what you do, but I would never do it. Why would I want to chew on somebody else's bubblegum? As Scott Del Fuego so eloquently put. That's crazy stuff, dude. And to say that you're the only channel that puts out... Where is any content about the Philippines on your channel? anything at all. I've just given more content on this show in the negative for the most part about Mango Square. If you want to meet $10 women with three teeth, well, my, Mango Square is where you want to go. I mean, if that's your thing. If you want to meet Women that put on enough cologne, you could smell them from 30 feet away, so you can't smell them when you get close up. That's Mango Square. The girls would walk into the outside terrace. It had an overhang, 
and the, the, the perfume that they were using was so overpowering. Why? You know what the French say, and this is true. If it smells like fish, you might want to make it a dish. If it smells like cologne, you better leave it alone, Jack. And that's what you're going to get when you come to the Philippines and go to Mangrove Square. Women that you can smell from 60, 70 feet away walking down the block. That's crazy stuff, dude. Never did I ever. I don't even, it doesn't even cross my mind to do that. Every girl I ever met online when I got to the Philippines, I was looking for a long-term relationship with. As soon as I realized they wanted money for my friendship or money because they were talking to me or money because they wanted to take their family out to dinner after we went out for dinner, I would say good night. Have a nice day. The, the Muslim girl I met, I have video of her in, uh, in the Ayala Mall. Um, she wanted, oh, she didn't want anything at first. Oh, God, she was, she was a sweetheart, that girl. And then DNC Human Service, at Frank can't take a joke. Now, he can't take a joke. He can't. Wow, the, the joke is going to be on him soon. He, he can't take a joke. That guy made a joke and he took his channel down. That's crazy. He can't take a joke. <laughs> what joke are you talking? DNC, what joke is it this week? If somebody said something about him, he got his panties in a bind. And he quit YouTube again. So DNC says he, that he thinks I have a chicken costume for Halloween. That would make a great Halloween costume. The Giga Ego chicken costume Halloween. Okay, let's go here. All right, Flying Circus has some links up. DNC, a, at Frank can't take a joke. I want a new big screen, so I'm thinking to donate my... Oh, yeah, 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 that freaking nutcase. He said he gave a 25,000 peso TV screen to a school, right? Okay, and he said it. But wait a second. The only comment that makes sense that argues that point in a relatively intelligent way, is the great Don C. Okay? Don C. said, no, he did not give a 25,000 peso TV screen to the children. This is Don C. talking in the comment. What he did was, he gave his old TV screen to the school and bought a new TV screen. We don't know if any of that is true, but that makes sense because the fella that said he gave his TV, he bought a brand new TV screen for the school, the man, you know, everybody knows the man's mathematical skills are like hovering third, fourth grade level. He couldn't remember whether it was a 50-inch TV screen or a 55-inch TV screen. Now, how do you go out and spend... 25,000 pesos on a TV screen that you bring brand new. You have your tricycle driver bring it straight to the school from the store. You don't, you don't have the box. You don't have a picture of the box. You don't have a picture of them installing the TV screen. You don't have a picture of the receipt. You don't have the receipt. You don't have a picture of them putting the TV screen up. And you don't remember whether it was a 50 or a 55-inch TV screen. And then on top of all of that, you don't make a video of this gift to the school. Don C. says it never happened. And that Don C., he's a very negative type of guy. But that comment, if it was on my page right now, I'd pin it to the top of the page. Because that comment made sense. Don C., no matter what he is, he knows the truth. He knows the truth. No matter how many times he posts half-truths, lies, total deception, sarcasm, satire, he knows the truth. And that statement that Don C. made was truth. 
justice in the American way. A guy, picture this, you, anybody on the anybody on the screen, you got 19 people watching, okay? You go out and you buy 25,000 pesos for a TV screen for the children. And you don't make a video of the purchase. But you're a blogger. You don't make a video of the TV screen being installed out of the box. Make a one-hour video right out of the box, out of the box onto the wall. Even if it doesn't turn on, make a video of out of the box, taking it from the tricycle to the school, the teachers, the children all gathered around saying thank you and we love you and all of that, the stuff the children do as a means of saying thank you. None of that. None of it's caught captured on video because it never happened. According to Don C., it never happened. And that's why the fraud, I mean the, the fella, is known as doing fraudulent uh, collections. Now, he also committed fraud when he said that Warren and I had... We did crazy stuff. I did crazy stuff on Skype to Warren. Dude, that question you should have an answer to ready. Get a piece of paper, write down the answer to that question. Because you might get asked that question in real life. And you should have an answer ready. Don't be. It's just going to be a question. Don't get all riled up. That, that, see if somebody could cover that yellow streak that runs up and down your spine. See if they could cover that up for a few minutes. When you answer the question, show us proof that I did something disgustingly perverted to Warren. Show us proof. Show us the chat from Skype. At least show us that. You are a trip, dude. You are a trip. And what he hears, what he heard just now, is when I asked him, told him that maybe he'll have to answer that question in real life. He heard... That somebody's going to challenge him in the parking lot. That's what he heard. It was never said. But that yellow streak that runs up and down his spine doesn't allow him to hear properly. Or the, the, the hearing is not good at all. Because the malignant narcissist that lives in Cebu don't hear. They don't hear. They don't hear what you say. They hear what you they think you, they want you to hear what they think that you said, maybe that you said this. That's the psychosis. That's the psychopathy of being a malignant narcissist. You don't hear what was said. You hear what you think you want to hear. Nobody ever challenged you to a fist fight in a parking lot. Never happened. Never happened. Well, if it did, I don't know about it. But... You were offered the opportunity to go outside, and that yellow streak, that yellow streak started flashing like this. Let me try to get, let me try to give you the yellow streak. It was flashing up and down. Like that. Neon yellow. And there was a light on the top of it. The yellow streak, it came up. Because you got a yellow streak, dude, that runs straight cord. From here to Brooklyn, you got a yellow streak. And another thing, you never lived in New York. You never lived in New York, ever. 20 miles from New York, maybe. 10 miles from New York. Dude, you got off YouTube. Somebody rattled your cage. I wonder what it was. I got to wonder. And there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that want to meet you. John Blaze, he set up a special operation to try to get everybody to get people's signatures. We're all going to buy autograph books and make videos of the event. And what did you do? Yeah, I told the authorities... You're a trip, dude. <laughs> Reminds me of like a, a an emergency stand back. Like on the alien 
when she was playing with the robot and it was going nyeh, 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 and the doors were opening up to vent out the alien from the spaceship. Nyeh, nyeh. That's that yellow streak he was going running up and down. And you talk about other people. Say it. Say it to anybody. Say it to anybody up close and personal. You will never, ever, ever, ever do that. That stuff is deeply implanted in your psyche. God, you are a piece of work. Apples. Apple. Ah, yeah, yeah, the guy wants to eat. <laughs> oh, that's that's fun. Hey, Caleb. Caleb, that's a satanic name. Caleb Garcia. What's up? Caleb is a, another word for Satan. You do know that, right? Thanks for stopping by, Caleb. Fazio has shown unaccountable images of the everyday Philippines, not just the tourist traps. Oh, no. I would have... I would have done a video yesterday of um, of the, the the malignant narcissist. There was a video of just the malignant narcissist showing you what kind of person thinks that they're they've made it. I've I live in a big house. I have money. Why don't you? And, and he talks down to people as if he has something that anybody else in this world would want. I said it a hundred times. I would rather live here with a view of the ocean that I'm looking at right now, a view of a white sand beach and the ocean. You couldn't give me the Giga Ego's house, and I don't care how well he lives, and if I had to live in that house and you paid the bills, I wouldn't do it because I, unless I could see the ocean from his house. But where he lives, if you could see the ocean, you can't go in it because Cebu, the water in Cebu, where he lives, even if the water is clear, the bacteria level in the water in Cebu is so high you can't go in the water. Look up bacteria level Cebu. Uh, I stayed at uh, the Estaca Bay Hotel, $110 a night, and it's it was clear as day. It was clear as day. Do not go in the water in uh, Lapu Lapu, the Estaca Bay Hotel. Or the, uh, Asta no, not the Estaca Bay, the arm and, a, arm and a Leg. What was the name of that hotel I stayed in? Not the Arm and a Leg. You have to spend an arm and a leg. But you couldn't, it didn't matter. $110 a night, the water behind the hotel was full of um, septic water. Uh, I don't remember the name. Anyway, let's get over here. Let's go back to the comments. Third tooth, three tooth woman is hot. That's, that was, the Golden Prince is a manga destination, but it's a good manga. If you have the money to stay at the Golden Prince, which I don't think you do, personally, talking to Nico. I'll look it up for you right now, Nico. I'll give you the link. It's like wearing someone else's glove. Not a good idea. And he's not talking about gloves. Flying circuses. Let's go back up here. I'll get you the name of the Golden Prince. You guys can come here and... Uh, and troll, but somebody's going to delete your messages. I don't know what this is. Talking about drugs on my channel will just get you blocked. Fazio was thirsty from all this shoot. You know, I haven't had anything to drink in two hours because I had a lot to... I drank a whole liter this morning. 
cousin was a strange comment. Says Flying Circus. Cousin. I'm going to abandon and betray Michael if I get a nice trip to the Philippines paid by paid for by the, the mesmerizer ego. He's never gonna. Now he's been uh, notice how he himself and this is this is part of what a malignant narcissist psychopath is really good at by not defending what he knows is wrong makes him look less guilty. It's all part of the psychology of being a malignant narcissist. Never admitting that you did something wrong. Never. Never admitting that you lie. Just keep telling. Look, there's a video, there's a book called The Big Lie. I'll give that. That's not the one... It's This is the one. Let, let's just get that link up there again. People of the lie. The psychology of a malignant narcissist, okay? The big lie is to allow other people to believe that you're telling the truth. Flying Circus is saying you might have to do squeal like a pig. Flying Circus means the movie with Burt Reynolds in it. Uh, Dueling Banjos or something like that. Deliverance. Deliverance. That's the name of the video. Okay. I think I'm going to get water, actually. Johnny, Johnsy, Jonesy Jones says, Mike, you're a good fella. He came on my channel the other day and said the same thing. Thank you, Jonesy Jones. I guess if somebody can take it, they can have it. I saw a mule at Mango Square, says Flying Circus. I, I've seen some of the most hurting women. And, and, and you guys are okay with that? Look, look. Look, there's so many possibilities of getting... See, a lot of the people that go to places like that, and this is true, they have their children growed up already. Growed. I use the word... I use one of Barry's words, growed up. They're all growed up. So they don't care if they get a life-threatening disease because their children, their families are already taken care of. But nobody that would ever want to start a family should ever do that because you can get a disease that you'll give your loved one, woman, and or your children and then you, then you can't have healthy children or a healthy marriage. But me personally, when I moved here, I wanted to start a have a long-term relationship and start another family. But it didn't happen. And that's okay that it didn't happen. But I would never risk my health and or well-being and, and give them $10 or $100. If they gave me money, I wouldn't do it. If I knew that's what they did for a living, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have any relationship with them. Now, the Muslim girl I started to tell you about, she was a nice girl. I dated her for quite a while. But she wanted me to marry her. And here was the caveat. We were in the Church of Simla. We were sitting down in the Mother Mary, Mama Mary room where you buy the candles and light up a candle for Mama Mary. And she said to me, will you marry me? I knew her about, I don't know, three, four weeks. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, I want to get married. I said, well, I don't, I don't know you. Actually, I don't really know you. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't had a relationship with her at this point. We just saw each other for a few dinners. And uh, we, I, I, I bought her a roasted chicken. We had dinner on Friday night at the buffet at the Golden Prince. We had breakfast a few times, and she asked me to marry her. I said to her, well, 
no, I don't want to get married. Why would you want to get married? And she said, well, my father will require you to marry me if you want to have carnal knowledge of me. She was like 24 years old. So I didn't believe this story anyway. She goes, but there's something else. If you marry me, this is the caveat. If you marry me and you give her father 50,000 U.S. dollars, 50,000, and I take that money, put it in a suitcase, and I bring it to northern Mindanao, her father will release her sister from bondage, her younger sister. And I'm saying to myself, this is like a movie. What are you talking about? And then she told me that the father was a Muslim, his first wife was Muslim, his second wife was Christian. The girl I was with at the church was brought up Christian. The sister was brought up Christian. The wife, his Catholic wife, was brought up Christian. But in order to free the girl's younger sister, they wanted, she wanted, he wanted 50,000 U.S. dollars to bring to Mindanao. This is the kind of stuff you read about in, in books or see in movies. Don't do that, by the way. That's not a good thing to do. But that's what she asked me. So we finished touring the Church of Simula. And normally she would, um, we would go back to the hotel and she would have dinner with me at the hotel or at the Ayala Mall. Somewhere we'd, we'd get a roasted chicken. But that day, she, uh, I got off at the Golden Prince and I told her, here's the money for the cab. I don't want to see you anymore. That's the kind of stuff. That's a true story about the Philippines. Now, whether you believe it or not, it makes no difference to me. I know it happened. I have video of that girl in the Church of Simla, but not her face. A few girls that I dated did not want their face in the video, and I didn't put it in the video. But that's the kind of stuff that I ran into when I came here. I never gave any of them a dollar. I did buy food for their family a few times. If I dated them, and when they left, I'd go to the market with them, and I'd buy them food for the family. I had no problem with that. But I'm not giving them cash. That's just not part of my psyche. But you people... Begging money, here's my PayPal link. You give me money, I want to go to the Philippines and date little girls. I want to chew on somebody else's bubble gum. I want to say that the island guy made up the story about a harem. Dude, that's not acceptable. Not acceptable. Please don't do it again. Mike Spring, Jones, Jonesy Jones says Mike brings relevant information unlike others. Thank you. I do. Mike interacts with people unlike others. Yeah, all the time. Hey, I see blue. High, high cholesterol. Hey, talking about high cholesterol, I'm going to bang a pot. I have lost another half inch off my waist, even eating two and three and four hundred calories a day. I have lost an, an additional half inch off my waist, and now it's over 50 pounds I've lost. Even though I have been eating for the last 10 days, 400 calories, 500 calories, 300 calories a day. That's another thing, the malignant narcissist and psychopath in Cebu. He can't get it through his head that for 50 days I ate nothing. I only drank water. For 50 days, I only drank water. Now, for the last 12 days, I have 100, 150 calorie meals twice a day. He, he lied 
and said, I know that Fazio was eating. He's been eating one meal every... No, I, I didn't. For 50 days, I did no meals, nothing but water and calamansi juice. You psychopathic, malignant narcissists can't hear or comprehend English. You hear what you want to hear. And what you need to hear is that someday somebody's going to ask you questions and you should have the answers ready. Nobody challenged you to a fight in the parking lot. Never happened. That's that yellow streak. That's that yellow streak you got attached to your spine. Let's go back over here. Let's get, I'll get down to your super chat, and then Mike is on the money. Thank you. Libro. Okay, wait a second. Yeah, you're right, says Iluka Labram. Thank you, Iluka. Frank never has proof for any of his claims. He's a punk, says DNC's Human Circus. Oh, God. Let's get that. Let's get that on the screen so he won't go to YouTube and say that this guy said this about me. Let's see. Frank, says DNC's Human Circus, never has proof of his claims he's a punk. That's what DNC says. Miss the Philippines at your service. Oh, God. I could tell this is going to be a good comment. Sir Fazio can be hard on some Filipino habits and customs and how things are, but he does not lie about his feelings and sneak around to take advantage and buy Filipinas and steal their pride from them. Thank you. No, I would never do that. Oh, if you want to see a funny video, thank you, Mr. Philippines at your service. No. You've never seen me do that kind of stuff. It, not only did it, I never do it, I never did it. It's not a question of having videos of it or not, I just don't do it. Flying Circus says, John Blaze is well endowed. Well endowed, he hears. Flying Circus has videos about John Blaze, the size of John Blaze. Flying Circus. He's the mayor of the other side of YouTube. High cholesterol. So, okay. Mitzvahs. Oh, oy vey, Fazio. Small thanks for your many mitzvah, mitzvahs. Mitzvahs. I guess, I guess that means stories. Let's, let's bang a pot, baby. You know how I like banging a pot. We have the... Do we have the pot? We have the spoon with Captain Billy Jack... Thank you, high cholesterol. I lost another half an inch off my waist. I lost 52 pounds in 63 days. And when I start exercising, I'll lose more, I'm pretty sure. High cholesterol. I don't have any longer the malignant narcissist psychopath nutcase in Cebu said I would die from high blood pressure when my blood pressure went down to normal he made up a new story which is normal that's what malignant narcissists do they have to knock you down in order for them to feel like they're subhuman. A subhuman malignant narcissist will never tell you the truth. That's why DNC said he has no proof of his claim. High cholesterol, thank you very, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Salama. And uh, I don't know if that, if you guys are getting the point here, but the point of today's video is if you want to be a malignant narcissist, 
if you want to be a psychopath, if you want to be a pervert, if you want to be a monger, keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself because most normal people don't want to hear it. Now, you got somebody who appears to be normal. They probably don't want to hear it either. Because a lot of people that appear to be normal are allowing it to take place. That's problematic in and of itself. But at least they're not knocking me for knocking it. And that I got to give them credit for. Just like I did in the beginning of the show. Let's go over here. I got to get water. But let's go over here. Let's read the comments. Thank you, High Cholesterol. Now the roasted chicken causes food allergies. Ah, uh, Flying Circus got the, the Mindanao pork video up. The, the worm pork. He's got that up on his channel. Hopefully he can post the link for that. Isn't everyone in the Philippines an island guy? Yeah, well, that's how they move around saying, Where's you? Where's you? Michael Thomas Fazio, the island guy. Everybody knows who you're talking about. Made up a story. I never made up any stories about a manga. I never made up any stories about somebody being a manga. I never made up any stories about somebody having a harem. I never made up those stories are all true stories. Go ahead, make me make me make another video public to Flying Circus. Make Flying Circus do another video. Go ahead, make him do it. He'll do it. I gotta get water. Alright? Make him do it. Flying Circus. Cal Hathaway. No, they're not scammers, Cal. I, I believe, no, no, Popeye, Popeye would never lie. I don't think Popeye would lie about giving money to the children. Yad certainly doesn't. Mick Fisher, they had a show on a few weeks ago showing they had hundreds of children being fed. No, I don't think it's a scam at all. I think it's a good thing to do that. Okay? I don't know where I'm going to get water. I don't have any freaking water. Damn it. Okay. I wanted to get water. I got to get a lemon, though. I can't drink this without a lemon. I'll be right there. Lemon. 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 Okay. I'm all watered up. Notice I haven't talked about what's going on in the Middle East. Here's another thing. Okay, I was the first person and the only person on day one of the, uh, the attack that occurred in the Middle East. I said on day one, the very first day, that 50,000 people would perish. I said that. And I said, they're never going to give us the truth. And then I said in the same video that has the words 50,000 people will die. In that same video, I said that this is going to get really, really, really ugly. And that Israel would be involved with Syria and their northern bordered countries on there, and maybe Iran. I don't remember the exact words I used, but it will be more than the Hamas said that on day one. On day one, they said 900 people died. On day two, they said 903, 904, 905, 906, 900. Even though they bombed more than 1,000, 1,500 buildings and ships, and tunnels. But the number never changed. Yesterday the number changed. It's 1,400. They're not telling you the truth. They're never going to tell you the truth. And there's going to be 50,000 dead by the time this is over. I said it first. 
Okay? Nobody else on YouTube said it. And that's why I don't get the big numbers on my videos, because I tell you the truth. This is going to get way, way more ugly than you want it to be. Now, they lie about everything. They're lying about everything. And Trump is no different. Trump is no different. He's not going to save you. He's just going to do it a different way. There is no more world as we know it that we grew up in, where our parents could have a nine-to-five job, our father. We owned a house. He owned a house. He owned a boat. And we had a place in the country in Long Island, and we had a place upstate. One from one nine-to-five job. That's all over. It's all gone because we give 67% of our income goes to war. 67%. Because it's 60% and then another 7% of the income goes to taxes. It's almost 70-something percent between you pay tax, you buy a car, you pay tax on the car. But you pay tax on your income. 67% of all... We work, not we, because I don't work. But people that work in America now work until it was June, then it was July, and now it's the middle of August before they start to see a profit for their, for their work hours. 67%. And now... They want to stop giving money to Ukraine, and they want to give it to Israel. And I don't care where they give the money to. I really don't care. Because nobody, nobody like you or me or any single person or any hundred of single person or any thousands of single person going to mean anything. Whatever their plan is, their plan has been planned for 20 years. And the implementation of their plan has been planned down to the second for the last five or six years. The fact that Israel got caught and no help came to the kibbutz for five to seven hours. I don't know. You believe that? That's crazy stuff. That's really crazy stuff. To believe that one of the high, most highly trained armies and military in the entire world got bamboozled, hoodwinked for seven hours. No response for five to seven hours. It, why would you believe that? Do you realize the lies that they back it up with? Oh, they knocked down the transmission towers. In five to seven hours, Anybody in halfway decent shape could run 10 miles, 20 miles to call to find a government agency. But you people believe that they knocked, the, they knocked down the transmission towers so nobody could make a phone call. What does a phone have to do with several thousand people in a kibbutz, young people? And one of them just running to get help five or six or seven miles away. Why couldn't that happen? The road, there's roads to the kibbutz. There's roads back to the city. Do you people have no cognitive reasoning skills? None. There's no tower. There's no tower. The towers only go, you can only be a mile away from the tower to begin with. Why couldn't somebody just start walking or running up the road? Why wasn't somebody running up the road? Why didn't somebody run up the road and say, look, the kibbutz is under attack. Anybody could have just ran up the road. But you people believe that the, the local tower was taken down or, you know, shut off or something, whatever it was. You people are stone stupid, Okay. You people, now that's true. You people are stone stupid for not being able to figure this out from day one, which is what I said, that 50,000 people will die. And this is going to get a lot bigger. I said it on day one. 
I don't know what video it's in or where it's in what video, but I've said it, that it's going to be possibly three other, three, three people Israel will be fighting. And now you have some of the greatest scholars and psychologists in all of the world, Sam Vatkin, who's an Israeli citizen, and a psychologist who does a lot of videos about narcissists, malignant narcissists and psychopaths, saying that Mr. Netanyahu is not a well-liked person in Israel. And, and these are the psychologists, psychotherapists, politicians, and rabbis of Israel saying that they're going against their own prime minister. This is going to get really bad. This is going to get a lot worse than it is. But first, I have to drink my water. This is old business. This is new business. Got to finish old business like Gomez Adams says. Old business, you finish old business before you do new business. That was good. Okay, now I got it almost a liter here. Not real thirsty, though. But I got a lot of lemon in there. I got two lemons in there. Big lemon. Big one. I'm going to have some of that. The lemon skin. You believe for 50 days? All I had was lemon juice and the meat out of the lemon skin for 50 days. A little bit, I had, uh, I ate a couple of calamansi whole, though. That I did. Well, they're good. Oof. When you don't eat anything for 50 days, even a calamansi whole with the skin and everything tastes really good. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking seriously of having another. I might not. I might and I might not. Let me check this out. Let me see the comments. Well, we have trolls. All right, so there's really not a lot more comments being made. Let me get you uh, a list. Let me get you a list that I made of uh, my playlist. Let's get, let me open that up. I got to go to my content. Uh, playlists. So let me get you. Now this is a really good video playlist that I have. And there are 35 videos in this playlist. Now, this is about the, the, the war that's going on in Israel, who they're, who they're fighting. I, I just keep adding videos to the playlist. Uh, let's go back here. I forget how to open. Oh, I got to go to my home page to do that. Okay. In order, I, I forget. I, I don't. YouTube is really complicated when you think about it. So I'm going to go to my channel. And when you get to my channel, you're going to see playlists. Look at this nutcase over here. Look at this. This is crazy stuff, yeah? Look at that. Woo, 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 woo. Okay. Playlists right there at the top. And then you click on playlists. And then you get my, my playlists. Now, I'm going to tell you which ones I would want you to go watch. The one I would recommend is, uh, well, this one here, Phenomena, this is about definitive proof that there are UFOs, and they interview 64 children in uh, Uganda, I think, or Africa, that saw a UFO and, and uh, an actual alien, and 64 children somewhere between the ages of like 8 and 12 years old, all saw the children. 
So this is, there's only one video on this. And then Senator Harry Reid, how he um, lobbied to get the truth told about UFOs and aliens. And he's got $20 million for that. But, um, and there's well, astronaut Gordon Cooper is also in this video. It's a great playlist of, uh, it's a great video. It's just one video in that playlist. I'll add to them as I as I go further through the the list of videos. Now this one here, I call it Net Net and Yahoo because I don't I always forget how to spell the man's name. Net and Yahoo's Israeli War, and most of them are Jimmy Dore videos, and most of them are the Jimmy Dore videos are Jewish scholars talking about what's going on in the Middle East. Uh, Jewish scholars on the side of truth, justice, and the American way, although we're not getting that from our politicians, they're talking about what they believe to be the truth. So on this, this video playlist, there's Netanyahu, Israel, and there's 35 videos in this video. Now this one is about some nutcase that said that Michael Thomas, Fazio, and Warren had sexual fantasies occurring on Skype. And it, it's all lies. He never shows proof. He swears he doesn't lie. He swears he's never collected money for a fraud, fraudulent thing. He swears whenever he collected money, the money always went to the, to the purpose it was collected for. And the truth is that even if it didn't go to the intended purpose, you gave him the money, it's his money to do what he wants with. So you cannot give somebody money because they say they're going to go have dinner and then they go and buy a bottle of booze. You cannot complain about that because unless you have a contract with them that the money you gave them was going to go for dinner, you cannot complain about what they did with the money. Now this one here is the world's longest underground river. I don't have a lot of videos up on this one that are public. So these are all private videos. I'm going to start releasing these videos. Uh, this one is uh, the world's biggest clam. has 440 views. I released it seven days ago. But the rest of these are all on private. I have to review them. I want to see what order I'm going to release them in. But uh, none of them have anything bad. It's all uh, videos. Nico, why don't you do this tour, Nico? If you want to show people what the Philippines is like, take this hike from Sabang, S-A-B-A-N-G, Sabang Beach in Palawan. Take the hike seven hours up to the top of the underground river, Nico. If you want to show people what the Philippines is like, Nico. Not what Cebu. Cebu, the city... Look, let's, let's try to clear this up. The city of Cebu and the bars and restaurants in Cebu proper is not the Philippines. It's where you go to meet little girls. That is not Philippines. It's mongerism. You want to be a monger? Then just say, I'm a monger. But if you want to see the Philippines, I did this trip twice. I have 28 videos of this trip. That's the Philippines. Sabang, the beach of Sabang, where you take the boat to the underground river and go into the mountain. That's the Philippines. The Chocolate Hills. Is a beautiful uh, trip, day trip from Bahal. I, it's it's just a bunch of dirt mountains, but it's pretty cool. I mean, that's the Philippines. That's what there is to do here. The the Lobok River cruise. Now that is Philippines. That is Philippines traditional singing, Philippines traditional instruments, Philippines traditional songs, Philippines traditional drums. And and then and you have a great a great buffet on the boat. 
on the barge. It's a moving barge. That's the Philippines, not Cebu. You to call Cebu proper and to call a bar and to call to say that you want to have you want to chew on somebody else's bubble gum. That's not the Philippines, dude. That's what you can do in the Philippines, but that's not what the Philippines is all about. Philippines has some cool traditional stuff. I, I don't, you know, I've done most of it. Diving is something that I like to do. Why don't you do something like diving? Why don't you do something real? Not come to the Philippines to meet somebody else's ex-girlfriend. That's sick stuff, dude. I'm going to say it again. You have problems to believe, to go out and publicly ask for somebody else's girlfriend's phone number or how to get in touch with them. Just for what reason? For what reason? For what reason? For what reason? It's really, to tell us what you want to do. Well, you said what you want to do. Is that really a reason? That's not, yeah, we'll make some video views, but it's not good content. Everybody knows I'm telling the truth, too. Even your friends know that what you said you want to do is nuts. Why, you want to piss somebody off? That's the whole reason you're going to come all the way to the Philippines and you're going to spend thousands of dollars just to piss somebody off? That's a psychic break as well, psychotic break as well. To go travel three, 4,000 miles in one direction and spend somebody else's money, by the way, the Giga Ego's money, that's what I believe you're spending. And then, so that you can chew on somebody else's bubble gum, that's content to you. You should really think about what you say in your video. Forget about me wearing some stupid costume. Forget about that. Forget about what I say. Think about what you say. I want to go to the Philippines to chew on somebody else's bubble gum. Go ahead. Call me a liar. I'll give Flying Circus another six-hour video, and we'll do it again. We'll start again next week. Okay? So from today on, I won't mention you in the negative, and you don't need to mention the island guy in the negative or Michael Thomas Fazio in the negative. You don't need to mention me in any way, shape, or form because it ain't going to work. It just is not flying well with me. Okay, you can never prove that I was lying. There's nothing you can do to prove that I made up a story about somebody having a harem. Nothing you could say or do. But on the other hand, I could just release another video with faces and audio and prove he does. So drop it. I'm asking you nice. And if you decide to drop it, and not mention me, I won't mention you. And we'll be good. But don't call me a liar. Don't call me a fraud. Don't insinuate nothing that I didn't tell the truth. The guy is a manga, ex-manga, current manga, had a harem, always had a harem, wanted a harem, was proud of his harem, talked about his harem, paid the girls money to be in his harem. And that's the truth. You want to talk about the Philippines? Come here. Do the world's longest underground river tour. Do the, go diving. If you're not a diver, come to the Philippines. Come to the Philippines and learn how to be a, a diver. Get your Open Water 2 certification and be a diver. Don't, don't, don't. Don't come to the Philippines to have sex with little guys. Hey, Steve and El Primo. El Primo is gagging. El Primo. And it is a yuck gag type of... That is crazy. It's sick. It's sick stuff. It's sick... DNC, baby. DNC with the blue. Blue, blue is... Who is blue?
That's that. See, this is getting out of control, the NC. Popeye has three pensions. He doesn't need the money, and he is no scammer. I'm going to. I'm going to put that, I'm going to highlight that video as the pinned comment, because that's true. Where is, where is this right here? Pop up. Okay. Popeye has three pensions, that's true. He has his military pension, and he has a pension from the post office. Replace the pin comment. He has his pension from the post office and he did something else. He's a hard working man. So he and he's not a scammer. And he's not a liar. He's he's not a liar. And he's not a so people that are liars are usually scammers. There's a guy in detention that fits those qualities. There's a guy in northern Cebu that fits those qualities. One is in detention, the other one should be. Flying Circus, we ask Cal Hathaway, Flying Circus, we ask you a question. Can you back up the upload video about the big ego? The big ego, sound interested. What more do you need? What 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 proof do you need, Cal? What, do you need it with visual? Tell you what, Cal. Here, look at me. Look at me. You want proof? I'll give you proof. I'll give you proof. Give me 200 U.S. dollars right now in Super Chat. And then tomorrow when the money clears, I will send you, put your, put your email address up on the screen. Put $200 on the screen right now. Two one hundred dollar super chats. Cal Hathaway. You want proof? I'll give it to you. One hundred and one hundred. Two one hundred dollar super chats. Cause you're running your mouth, trying to make my friend Flying Circus look like he's not telling the truth, and in fact calling me a liar. Put two one hundred dollar super chats on the screen right now. Send me. Put your email on the screen right now. Break it up so that we can see it. Or I'll go to your channel. I'll look for your email address. And then here's what we're going to do. You're going to put two $100 Super Chats on the screen. Two of them. One after the other. I'm going to get your email address. If it's not in your About page, put it in your About page on your screen. And I will email you the six-hour video that he got those clips from with the face of the Giga Ego in it. But I have to roast it to it. I have to tell you it's going to come from another channel. Not going to come from my channel. Because I don't know who you are. And you might just strike it. But for $200, I'll send you the video. You don't have to ask Flying Circus for it. I want the 200 And out of that 200 I'll tell you what I'll do, Cal. Because you got a big mouth and you're trying to make somebody look like a liar. So here's what I'm going to do. You're going to give me $200, and I'm going to take half the money from that $200. So it's half of $66 twice is $132. It's half of $132 because YouTube takes 30%. So I'm going to give $66 of that money directly to Yads. Not in a super chat. I'm going to send it to her as a uh, PayPal or, or Gcash. Okay? Cal, instead of running your mouth and trying to back down one of my friends and what they said is true, I want $200 from you. And when you give me the $200 and your email address... And that money clears tomorrow. I'll take half that money, $66, and send it to Yads 
to, to help pay for the children's food for Christmas. Okay? Otherwise, you probably should be someplace else. Never question my friends or anything that I say. Never do it. You can't. You want proof? I'll give you proof. That's what. So if you want. And then Cal Hathaway, you'll be known as the guy that gave Yads $66 to feed the children. You'll be a big shot on YouTube instead of a big mouth trying to catch one of my friends in a lie. Ask a question. You can, you can frame that question any way you want. You're asking him to prove that what he says is true. It's in the video. Why? Because it doesn't have faces in it because he'll get a strike to put the faces in it. But I will send it to you from another channel that I have. And if I get a strike on the other channel, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I don't use that channel for anything but storage. And it's just a backup for my storage storage. You want proof? I'll give you proof. It'll cost you $200. Fucking assholes. So some Jewish landlord, says Flying Circus, stabbed... A Muslim mother and her six-year-old child. That's crazy. That's crazy stuff. Now, me, personally, with all that stuff that's going on in Israel, I have no wish, want, will, or desire to harm Jewish or Muslim. I mean... Now, I don't know the backstory on that, but that's crazy stuff that that kind of stuff is happening. These are psychopaths. These are sycophants. These are sick people that want to do that. I will be an advocate for truth, justice, truth and justice, just like I just knocked Cal Hathaway. Do not ask anybody for proof. He put the proof up there. What more proof do you want? You want somebody to do something for you you have to do something for somebody else. $200. I'll give you the whole six hour video. Okay? Cal Hathaway. Let's go to Cal Hathaway's channel, who probably has nothing on his channel. So, DNC, that's pretty sad. Let's go to Cal Hathaway's channel. I would say he has nothing on his channel. He has nothing on his channel. He has no videos. He has no subscribers. His probably about page probably means that he was just a new uh, 2019. So he's had a channel for four years, but he has no home, no content, no playlists, no channels about. And you want people to spend time talking about proving something to you. Who are you? Who are you? that anybody should spend 30 seconds with. You got your time and you got your answer. Other sources in the Israeli war, I'm pretty sure Flying Circus, Flying Circus knows about the Middle East, will be joining in. It's going to be a mess. Oh, uh, that's sad, DNC. You see, this is, this is what they're doing. And this is... Who runs, who runs the, the news? If that Jewish person that stabbed the woman and the child knew the truth about who really runs the country and the newspapers and what's really going on, that person would not have stabbed the child or the mother. And that's what's... You people are brainwashed, just like you got some moron named Cal Hathaway, but you won't ever see him again on my channel. We're going to remove him. Bye-bye, Cal. Let's go to Cal Hathaway's page. Let me show you how to do this. We'll go to the channel. Let me show you how to block somebody permanently for questioning my friend, Flying Circus. To prove you, you, have, you want something, you give something. I want $200. Now I'm never going to get my $200. You click this little flag here on the About page. You go down here. Say, hide user from my channel. Hide user. Boom. And then you say, submit. Bye-bye, Cal. Have a great life there, Cal. I've seen you before. 
I don't need you on my channel. Don't ever question anything that Flying Circus says, anything that DNC, any of my friends, don't ever question what they say. My friends don't lie. They don't make up stories and they don't exaggerate. And and BB, BB is not well liked. That's true. My theory, according to DNC's Human Circus, my theory, Israel has the best intelligence in the world. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. They, they certainly do. They have intelligence over computer systems that were hacked in America from 30 years ago. Mr. Netanyahu knew the attack was coming and let it happen the same way we knew 9-11 was coming and let it happen. And that is, that is exactly, exactly what's in my playlist. And uh, we'll, we'll, you know what we'll do right now? And we'll give, let's get Jimmy Dore. Let's get the video from Jimmy Dore. It was just on this morning, Jimmy Dore's playlist. This is a great channel in case, uh, in case you don't know where to get some truthful news from. Uh, I forgot which video it was. Ah, here it is right here. Was this attack allowed to happen? Okay, see that? And this is the video that I wanted to get for you. After searching for a long time. This is the video that I wanted to get for you. Uh, this is not Jimmy Dore, but this is his channel. And in this video, it clearly states that this attack, as DNC said, that it would be impossible. Now, the guy does not use the seven-hour time frame that I use. He uses the five-hour time frame. He says, how is it possible that for five hours, no one knew what was going on in the kibbutz? And this video is already part of my playlist. And, uh, and how do you put a video in a playlist? You go to these three dots here. You go save these three dots. Save it. Now it's already in my playlist. You see the blue, the blue check here? It's already in my playlist. Okay, so I'm going to post this video. So I'll, I'll give you the Jimmy Dore show right now, too. I'm just, I got to, I got to shut a few channels down here. So this video here proves what DNC says is true. And these are, uh, the name of the two men in the video are David Edward Unicorn, D-E-U, Dissidents, D-I-S-S-I-D-E-N-T-S, -S -S Do Dissidents. Uh, that's the name. All right, it's, uh, excuse me, it's D-U-E, D-U-E, do dissonance. Okay? Right there, follow do dissonance on YouTube, on Twitter. Do dissonance on Subtract, whatever that is, okay? So this channel here, do dissonance, are two Jewish men, by the way. Here they are, right over here. These are two Israeli men, Jewish men, one and two, that are totally against the war and also against what is being said in the newspapers, these two men. So Nico hasn't given any information like this out on the war. Nico hasn't given any information about 
where to go scuba diving in the Philippines. Nico hasn't given any information on beaches in the Philippines. Nico had one or two quick videos from years ago. Don't say that you're the number one channel to go to to get information about the Philippines if it's not true. You should talk about truthful stuff and then call me a liar. Those three things don't go together. Calling me a liar in and of itself is problematic. Okay, so this video, let's go to the Jimmy Dore show proper. Let's go, we, we could go to do dissonance right here. Let's go here on Twitter. I don't, I don't have anything to do with Twitter, nothing at all. But I'll give you the link. I, I haven't posted anything on Twitter that I can remember. Accidentally, I posted something a few months back. So this is the channel, Do Dissonance, Do Dissonance. Now here's a worthless human being. This guy Anderson Cooper, he's a straight up and down liar. And this guy's an idiot. This guy is a complete idiot. This guy here, air the Russian bomb. This guy here is a complete moron, and this guy's a complete liar. That's the truth. This guy here, that guy hit the the jackpot when the oil rig went up. I can't tell you why though. Um, do dissonance. Okay, Flying Circus and DNC's theory is true. And that's what was on that Jimmy Dore. So Jimmy Dore, oh, I didn't get you the page. Okay, let's close that out, close that out. Let's close this out. Let's go over here. Let's go here. Uh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh. We're having troubles. Yeah, says Scott Del Fuego. Thank you, DNC. 42 is the remaining. 42, baby. That's the answer to all the world's problems. 42. Thank you, DNC. Well, I, what am I doing? What am I doing? I, I, I lost my cognitive reasoning abilities. What am I doing? Thank you. Thank you, DNC. Thank, thank you, DNC. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for giving money to me. Cal Hath I knew Cal was a troll from as soon as I saw the comment. They want you, this is what these trolls do. They want you to spend an hour or two hours of your life to answer one of their worthless questions. But they don't want to give you any money for it. Did you see Cal Hathaway throwing $100 on the screen? Did you see him throwing me a super chat? No, I never, and I don't care about that one way or the other. But what he wants you to do is spend time talking to him because he's got nothing else to do with his life. He's got a channel for four years, no videos, no subscribers, no playlists, no liked videos. But he wants you to spend an hour and a half of your life to answer his worthless question. You'll never see him on my channel again on that name. Thank you, DNC. Thanks from me and me. Thank you from the chicken choker to Mike Ross. You are persona non grata. I don't care. You you are the biggest backstabbing, worthless garbage I have ever met in my entire life. You said the other day you only like Michael Fazio when he's doing hate hate rants. 
You are a piece of garbage, Mike Ross. You will never come on my channel under any name. You're not blocked right now. If you want to send me a couple hundred dollars super chat, then we could talk about it. We could talk about it. You don't super chat people. You don't help people out with like Yads or Popeye with the children's fun. You don't give nobody nothing. You just come on people's show to troll. You're a piece of garbage. I, I'm this. I don't care what you are. You're a piece of garbage. I'm, I'm this, I don't care what you are. It doesn't matter to me. What you are is a troll. That's what you are. You're a troll. And you, you, you say, I don't like Fazio unless he's doing hate videos. Because that's a troll comment. You'll never be allowed to comment on, well, I mean, let's just go to $200 route, the Cal Hathaway method of making Michael Fazio happy. You send me $200, Mike Ross? And I will give $66 to Yads, and your name will be up on lights on my channel. I'll make a video. Mike Ross is the best. Mike Ross is a great commenter. Mike Ross is this. Other than that, don't come on my channel. I don't know what name you come on underneath, and I don't really care, but you're not allowed to comment on my channel. I only like you. you what you like is the pain and suffering of others on other people's channel because you have no self-respect whatsoever so you go around trying to destroy everybody else's reputation because you don't like yourself so don't come i see your comments i just don't comment on your comments in fact i could have blocked you on john blaze's channel but i didn't because that's not my business if you would have said something about me on john blaze's channel then i would block you so your comments are worthless you, Gogo Bobo sister, worthless. Absolutely worthless bloggers. The F Jerry the Fairy, worthless. Thank you, DNC. Thanks for sending money to me. And thank you. I put on a good show. That 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 the fact that I can put on a good show, and I don't need other people to come on the panel and back me up because I have enough stuff to talk I would have people on the panel uh, in fact I'm gonna ask I would have DNC on the panel I would have Scott on the panel I would have flying circus on the panel I would even have Popeye on the panel I, Popeye would not do anything to hurt my channel. I would not have a lot of other people on my channel, but I would have men of honor on my channel. Men with honor. Louis Pagan Ponce. Popeye is a man of honor. Even though he could have gone after me, he didn't, because he knows I'm right. He knows I tell the truth. I might not be right for telling the truth, but he knows that I'm telling the truth. And I appreciate that, Popeye. And I'm going to say it every time I think about it. Now, I would have Popeye on my, ch on my channel. But right now, I don't feel the need to have an open channel. I'd have, I'd have Allo on my channel, for sure. But uh, we have some things that we have to take care of legally. And then when I get all that sorted out, we'll have Allo and me. We'll be doing live streams about the, the court system in the Philippines, whether it works out how it works, how long it takes, the worthless endeavor to spend thousands of hours. That guy that he put the guy in detention, three and a half years, he pulled whatever hair he had left out. That's all CGI hair. That's artificial intelligence hair he has on it. That's why it's orange. And uh, that guy, three and a half years to file a case on somebody every day, day in and day out, Hundreds, if not thousands of videos. And he never spent the dime of his money doing it. That money was given to him. I kept track of how much money he collected. He collected a lot more money that he spent on lawyers. Just like he collected $500 to give the people in northern Cebu one lucky, and then he, he didn't do it. 
Just like he collected money for his first girlfriend and didn't give it to her. He don't have to give anybody the money you give him. Till there's a written contract, there's no guarantee that money's going to go where you want it to go. That's why the idiot is in detention with no money. Because he told everybody to give a certain person money and that person's not obligated to give him the money that people gave him for him. So he has no money, he has no passport, and in order to get his passport, I'm sure the other man is going to ask for more money to bring him his passport. Just another scam. And the guy scammed himself, because the guy's an idiot, and the guy in detention is a complete idiot. He said, give, give this guy all, and then when the, the guy was collecting the money hand over fist, the guy is not obligated to give him five cents. Because he said he was? Show me the contract. You moron. You had people give him three or four thousand US dollars. Two hundred thousand pesos. My best guess. And you are not entitled to a penny of it. Because you didn't have a contract with him to be from the get-go. And now you say he has your passport? Well, what's it worth to you? What's it worth? You have an agreement with him to give you the passport? He might have to travel 100 or 200 miles. You might have to pay him for his hotel room, his airfare, his boat fare, his food costs. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Just think about this. You're an idiot. And you laughed when I was attacked from behind. You're an idiot, dude. Nobody has to give you a dime. And if the guy has your passport, why did you give him the passport? He gave it to you. You gave it back to him. You're an idiot. Why? You should have gave it to your lawyer. That's who should have your passport. Dude, you are so screwed up in so many different ways. Yeah, I'm done talking about you. You should have took my advice. And I even made you an offer that would have all that shit would have been all straightened out if you would have took my offer last year, about just about a year and a half ago. But you didn't take my offer either, moron. Okay, let's go here. We got to get DNC. That's true. I got to get back up here. Thank you, DNC. Steve twenty five nine zero one. There's a guy. Sure, he, that guy in northern Cebu, he's always talking about beating people up and cold cocking them, which is a term they use in boxing, cold cocking. It's like when you walk up to somebody and you just hit them and they don't expect it, except that Steve25901, he knows that guy in northern Cebu personally. When that guy in northern Cebu says he's going to cold cock you, no. It doesn't mean he's going to punch you in the mouth. What it means is he's going to fill his mouth up with ice cubes. That's what it means. Yeah, think about that for a minute. Steve25901, he told me he knows that guy personally. I don't want to know any more than that, though. Steve, I don't want to hear the details. The bat infestation. <laughs> How's Ah, the Arby's is the roast beef. Yeah, the roasted beef, the curtains. The curtains. DNC covered in guano sauce, says Steve. Wasap. Wasap made me a lot of money, that, that term, what's up? I don't want to talk about that, though. Good for you. Good for Popeye. He was well prepared for retirement. He was. He worked hard his whole life. Come on, man. Guy works straight jobs, has straight pensions. Got to give the guy credit for that. And he doesn't have a, 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 a criminal history. And he doesn't allow people. He doesn't make up stories about people. He might allow people to say things, but he himself 
He knows the truth, Popeye does. I got I got to say that Popeye is a very fair man. I'm not saying it to kiss his ass because I don't care about kissing Popeye's ass. I don't have to kiss Popeye's ass. I've never done anything that would piss off Popeye other than I talked about Popeye's friend. But I talked the truth about Popeye's friend. And I talked the truth about the other guy, too. The guy had a harem, wanted a harem, talked about his harem for years, had a harem. And then he made me out to be a, a, a nutcase because he said I never had a harem. That was made up by the troll. And that would be me, the troll. Kiss my troll butt. Okay? Because you are a sick, psychotic, malignant, narcissist piece of garbage. Don't, don't interject the fact that you want to make me out to be a liar. Anybody that believes your crap is your crap. Those are your friends. But that's the type of psychopath or sycophant you have following you. Don't make me out to be a liar. Stop calling me a liar. Stop talking about Daisy May. Stop talking about things that you can't prove. I can prove you had a harem. You can't prove I'm a liar, and that's what you said was about. So I'm, I might let this go today. If I don't hear any more about it, then I'll let it go. I'm that's the kind of guy I am, like water off a duck's back. Keep it up, and we'll do it again next week, next Thursday, Friday. I don't care what day we do this. I got nothing else to do. Scott says, put a little bit of that money where your mouth is. Accusation comments where your accusatory comments are. Yeah, that, that guy had the opportunity. Steve, 25901. All this math is making me dizzy. And then back to Flying Circus. That stabbing is sad. It is sad. And it's, it's done because these... Look, you know how I feel about the number twos, okay? Let's not make any bones about it. If I could go back in history, I would change history. You would not have the people that are running the newspaper industry running the newspaper industry if it was up to me. But I can't go back in history. Those people are setting two people against one another two cultures, two religious beliefs, two systems, two countries. It's the Halagian, Halagian theory. You, you have these two fight. It's what a malignant narcissist does. It's called triangulation. The newspapers are making what would normally be a normal Jewish guy and a normal Muslim family that would get along and say hello to each other in the hallway. They're making them hate one another. That's the number twos. That's because some freaking clown didn't, didn't focus on just one thing. Should have just focused, should have learned how to focus when he was a kid instead of painting crap on the walls. That guy needed to learn how to focus. If I could go back, I would teach him focus, focus skills. Focus, focus, focus. I watch Jimmy Dore every day, says Steve. I didn't see the video. I, would, I wouldn't even watch a video like that. I, I, uh, a video of someone being stabbed wouldn't interest me at all. Um... I would read the newspaper, I would watch the video, I'd post it in a, in my playlist, but I wouldn't I wouldn't download it into my computer. That kind of stuff doesn't interest me. Yeah, Jimmy Dore is pretty cool. Thanks, Steve, for saying that. There's no a new Art Bell video. Art Bell died ten years ago, didn't he? You could be waiting a while for that one. And he was a shill, a government shill as well. 
I contacted him years ago. He wanted nothing to do with the pictographs on the dollar bill. Scott says it all. Michael does not care. If, I don't care if you hate me. I never cared and I'm never going to care. If you hate me because I tell the truth, that's your problem, not my problem. And, uh, and that clown in northern Cebu, he makes up stuff inside his head. Nobody ever said they wanted to fight you in the parking lot, little man. Nobody ever said it. All anybody ever said is they want to ask you questions. That's it. But you heard, if you want to fight me, you'll be, I wouldn't be surprised about nothing with you. There's nothing that you could do. You remember the yellow thing that runs up and down your spine? Remember that thing? That would prevent you from ever confronting anybody in real life. That yellow thing? Look, there he goes. Who? There goes the guy with the yellow streak. Look, see the yellow streak? is going up and down, and he's walking through the park, and they're asking him questions, and the yellow is yellowing, and the yellow is moving from a flash to a, a solid yellow line. Little man. Little man. Cold cocking him from the other side of YouTube. He, he got a propensity to talk about men's apertures, appendages. It's an amazing, amazing sickness that he has inside his head. <laughs> Michael doesn't like him, but always found him entertaining. Okay, then, uh, well, I'm going to drink some more water. I'll give you guys a few minutes. I, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I got to tell you, though, I I'm going to talking about water. Look, you, you want to know what it's like living in the Philippines? Let me try to tell you. See my hair? I washed my hair yesterday. I had enough water to wash my hair. And I have jugs of water. I could have took a bath this morning. But... I have these two and a half gallon jugs of water. I have 12 of them. I have about, well, I have about eight or nine left. Okay. We have zero water. Nothing at all. Three days. Three days. You want to know what it's like living in the Philippines? The pump that's six kilometers, not six miles, six kilometers from where I'm sitting. That pump blew apart Thursday afternoon. So I came home yesterday and I had I had gone to the city to and I bought uh, three kilos of bananas to give to the hospital. Because whenever I go to the city, I buy bananas or oranges for the hospital because they provide a service and the operation that they gave me was commendable. On, on, in, a, in a lot of different ways, okay? The service that they provided, the prices they provided, the expertise they provided. So every time I go to the city and I go to ICM Mall, every time I buy bananas or oranges at the ICM Mall. It's the last thing I buy because I buy three or four kilos of bananas. Yesterday, three kilos were, were ready to eat because I always buy the bananas that are ready to eat that day because when I bring them to the hospital, that's the day they're going to eat them. I don't buy bananas for tomorrow. So there were three kilos, so I buy those. And I go to the hospital, but the hospital is closed. So the jeepney goes right past the hospital, right past the front door. The hospital was completely empty, no guards. Nobody waiting outside. It's closed on Sunday. So I had 
three kilos of bananas. And what I did was, on the jeepney, I gave several people, the children, bananas. So that was one kilo gone. When I came down the block, I gave my neighbors one banana each. It's not much, but I got to get rid. I'm not going to eat them. I might have one or two, but I'm not going to eat three kilos of them. And I did. I had two this morning. They're small bananas. They're, this is the size. Small bananas like that. They're not the big bananas. These are 49 calories each. A big banana is 98 pesos. Okay, so... So yesterday when I was on working off my second kilo of bananas, one guy asked me, do I want rum? Now when I left at 7.30 in the morning, Dominic was drinking rum up the block. So Dominic and I always say hello. And he asked me if I wanted any rum. And I said, no thanks, I gotta go to the city. Maybe when you come back, because they always ask me to drink with them. I don't drink. But they always ask. So when I came home, he was still sitting in the same spot six hours late. And he was hammered. So I gave him a couple of bananas. I doubt if he even remembers. So then I came home and then I saw Stefan. And I asked Stefan if he wanted some bananas. And he said, yes, just one. I gave him a banana. And he says, what are you going to do now? Because he was drinking with Dominic. And I said, well, I'm going to take a bath, thinking that they we're going to have water. But we have no water. So he goes, there's no water. I says, yeah, I know. I have bottles of water. And he said, well, I have one right here. I have these big bottles. Now, this bottle is green. Because I didn't put chlorine in there. There's green in there. This is for toilet flushing water. So some of them I have chlorine in. They, they stay clean and pristine. But this is to flush the toilet. This is what we got to go through in the province. Now I have like 12 of these bottles. That gives me 30 gallons of water. Plus I have 15, 18 gallons in a bucket. One bucket. And then I have a 5 gallon bucket. So I have 50 gallons I have 45 gallons of water. That's enough. Usually by that time they'll have water again. And if that doesn't work, if that if there's not enough water there, there's a 500 gallon water tank. I can go next door and get all the water I want. 500 gallons uh, in in three different places. So I said to Stefan, how co how how come we don't have water? Oh, the pump broke on Thursday. I says, the pump at the, up by the airport? He goes, yeah. So for six kilometers, everybody west of six kilometers, the pump for that water supply. I don't, there's another water supply that feeds other people. But I don't know how much the water is. It's not a city water supply. It's a private. But the, the city supply doesn't cost that much. So I have... It's 15 pesos for a cubic meter. And that, I've not, when I run out of water, I just go next door if I run out of water. Everybody has 500 gallon tanks, I can have all I want. But, so we haven't had water Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or this morning. That's four days. So I said, to, well, what's, the pump is broke. The pump broke last year for 14 days, the pump broke. 14 days, something like that. They had to get a new pump. It was, I think it was 14 days. Well, when I went into the hospital, before that, the pump was broke for 14 days. It came back on when I got out of the hospital, but th this place, this is what it's like living here. And they don't tell you there's no water. Then yesterday we had no electric at all and no water. And no internet. I had to go to the city to get it, to get a load. And that's what I'm working off of now, a load from the city. In fact, I'm going to run out of electric right about now. In fact, I have 19%. 
Okay, so now we have electric. Let's see who's here. I'm trying to figure out. Well, okay, Scott. Well, Michael doesn't like him, but I found him entertaining. Him. There's a lot of hymns, boy. I got to tell you, which him is that? Foz is hilarious. Saying Frank's hair is CGI. <laughs> <laughs> he he gets upset. He can't take a joke. That's his problem. I told him years ago, you need to learn how to lighten up a little bit. But when he starts, he loses his mind. He loses his mind. He hears shit that he hears shit that's not that's never been said to him. <laughs> I never thought about it as being funny. I think that's the truth. The truth, the whole justice and the never American way. The truth, the justice and the American way. <laughs> the wizard. Oh, yeah, we got to talk a little bit more about the wizard. What the fuck is that guy's name? The wizard of what? I forget all the shit. The wizard of ego. Hey, bitch. To the big ego. Go ahead. Say my name again. Deny. Say Daisy's name again. But this is I'm you know, this is I'm daring you to do it. Go ahead, do it again. Watch the next video I give Flying Circus. Go ahead. Flying Circus can post anything he wants. I got fifty three hours of that crap that you posted over the course of the years. With your face with the people in the videos, with the harem, with the girls. Except that if I post the girls in the harem, I would be doing them an injustice like you did Princess Anne an injustice. Anybody that had, did anybody hear Princess Anne's video? She would want the Giga Ego, the Wizard of Ego, she would want you to stop breathing on her command. I'm going to put that link up so people can listen to her video. She would want you to stop breathing. That's how upset she was. You have no right to destroy that girl's name and reputation. Whether what you said was true or not, you don't have the right to make it public what you said. Let's get Princess Anne's video right up here right now. Okay, because I keep this stuff on my... You, you want to know how mad she is? She would want you to stop breathing air right now, right this minute, if it was up to her. She was so... She was crying hysterical. This is what the, the Giga Ego did to this girl. Innocent or not, the girl is upset that he posted this stuff on YouTube. She says she never even met you, and you were talking about how like she was some a common streetwalker. You have no remorse. You have no sympathy. You not you have no respect at all. And I'm be I'm being really serious about this. So this is why I don't like you, because you're to me. When she said that she wishes you would stop breathing, I'm okay with that. You are a piece of work, to be honest with you. You're a disgusting, despicable human being. And the fact that Nico sticks up for you doesn't make that much, doesn't make me think any more of you either. Look at what you did to this woman. She is hysterical crying for two hours. Whether what you, if you did make love to her, you posted it in public, talking about how this she was and how that's disgusting that you did that to her. She's an in, now the other pig that you talk about in the videos that Flying Circus uploaded, 
you could talk about her all you want. Makes no difference to me. Because she is what you said she is. But this girl, I don't think she is. And if she is, she's always been my friend. And you're not allowed to talk about my friends. But that other pig that you talk about, talk about her all you want. But this girl, she had a boyfriend. It caused the rift between her and her boyfriend. I'm not sticking up for her. That If she had relation with you, that's her, between you and her. It's not everybody's business. You're a disgusting, despicable human being. You want to talk about the other pig that you talked about? Talk about the other pig. Or all, all the other pigs that you're with and talk about. But this girl... You made her cry and destroyed her whole day, maybe week, and maybe the relationship between her and her boyfriend. Why? Why would you do that? And she was going out with this guy back then. So don't say that she wasn't going. Maybe she wasn't going out with the guy. You still put your, sh your nasty stuff out on the Internet. You're a piece of work, you are. It's what you are. You're a disgusting, despicable human being. So here is the video and the link for what he did to this girl. Uh, her name is Princess Anne. I got to put this in my... Uh, I got to get this in my, uh, in my chat. So this is uh, Princess Anne. I'm putting it in. I don't, I don't like or dislike Princess Anne, but she's always been a nice person to me. I know other people have had problems with other people on YouTube, but Princess Anne never did anything that I've ever seen that would hurt her. That would hurt anybody else's feelings. Now, maybe she did, but she didn't. But it doesn't matter what she did. What matters is that you put your private sexual fantasies or whatever out on the Internet and destroyed her YouTube persona. And that's not allowed. It shouldn't be allowed. Whoop, look at that nutcase. There he is. You guys want to see a woman cry and, and, and be upset? She's screaming mad. I guess I could probably catch a little bit of that. I heard of green screen, but <laughs> orange screen hair. Another great live stream from Michael Fazio in the Philippines, baby. Jacques Q. White. Hello, thanks for stopping by. 7.30, 12.25. Flying Circus, some creep is going to sing a banana song now instead of the mushroom song. Yeah, I'd like to see him sing a few bars of the mushroom man song to me. I told him what would happen. I told him what would happen when he made that song up years ago. I told him that's not going to end well for you. <laughs> and and the way it ended, where he ends up owing somebody 60,000 U.S. dollars because he sang that song, which is not the reason for the $60,000, but it definitely influenced the judgment against him. He thought it was a big joke. The mushroom man, the mushroom man. And, and I said to him, it's not going to work out well for you because one day somebody's going to ask you to sing that song to their face. Why don't you sing that song 
when people come to ask you for your autograph. Why don't you sing a few bars? I think you had to hum a few bars to the to the authorities last time you were there. No, isn't that isn't that what happened? You had to. I was that wasn't that was, it wasn't it wasn't me. It was, it was blah, 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 blah. Well, do you owe sixty thousand more? Well, yeah, pal, yeah, but I, but yeah, but dude. I told you when you started singing that song years ago that wasn't going to work. And then you sent me that mail the other day reminding me of the Mushroom Man song. You're a sick, you're a sick little man with little man syndrome. The little man, you know what the little man syndrome is, that yellow streak. It starts off as a slow beeping, beep, beep, yellow, yellow, and then it turns into a yellow Straight. Then it's a yellow flash. Psh. Coward. <laughs> the yellow. Go ahead. You sing that song to me. Go ahead. You do that. You do that. You won't have to worry about what the rest of your day's plans are. Because I'll sing a song back to you. One that you won't like just as much as I don't care for that song. But I don't sing that song and I wasn't I'm not responsible for 60,000 U.S. dollars for singing a song. I don't ask where children's bedrooms are. I don't do that. I don't do any crap like that. You, you have something wrong. You, 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 your cognitive reasoning is just not right. I don't ask. I don't even talk to children. I, I gave every child on the, the jeepney a banana yesterday. Never, never said to them, do you say thank you? Because two did and one did not. I don't care. The one right next to me, cute little kid. First he had some potato chips and then I gave him a banana for a backup snack. And I gave his sister a banana. And then I gave the, the little child across the aisle a banana. Okay? But I didn't even talk to the children. I didn't, re I didn't require a thank you. Or, or an acknowledgement. I just gave them the banana. They took the banana and they did. Two said thank you. One did not. I didn't ask them. Don't you say thank you. It's not my place. It's the mother's place to say thank you. And she said to him, do you say thank you? And he, he went like this. I think he knew to say thank you, but I think he was shy to say thank you to a stranger. So I didn't make a, a thing of it, but you would make a thing of it. You would make a thing of it. You Just like you keep singing that song. That song is going to back you into a corner one day that you're not going to be able to get out of. It or, Well, didn't it already do that? $60,000 to sing a song? Was it worth it? Dominic was making banana daiquiris the rest of the day. Maybe, but you know, I saw Dominic this morning. I was outside about six o'clock. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he, he drank all day. He drank at the, at the Fiesta DNC. This is what he did at the Fiesta. Dominic gets 1,500 pesos to roast a hog. And he's the best. That nobody else can roast a hog like Dominic. He goes out and gets lemongrass. He knows how to dress the hog. He roasts it perfect, where all the skin is perfectly crispy, cooked exactly right. He's he's the best. But what happened was he got some money up front. So the day the hog was going to get roasted, the 70-pound hog, there's a 65-kilo, 70-kilo, and a 30-kilo a hog. 70, the 70, 65-kilo hog was first. That day, I went out at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was going to do a video of him dressing the hog. Well, he didn't show up. So Stefan and... Leo was there and Stefan and Junior, another another guy. And it's it's in my video. But he didn't show up. 
that day at all. This, the faster was the faster was a Monday. The sixty-five pound hog was Saturday. The seventy pound hog. Excuse me. The sixty-five pound hog was Sunday. The seventy pound hog was the day of the fiesta. And then the thirty kilo hog kilos, not pounds. The thirty kilo hog was the day after the fiesta. Because they celebrate the fiesta for five days. So he didn't show up for Saturday to ho to roast the hog. He didn't show up Sunday at all. Never showed up. He was gone. He was somebody said he was drunk and sleeping in the lot next door, not even in the bed. Anyway, so Monday was the the hog, the holiday, and the day after Monday was the 30 pound hog. He didn't show up for that day either. But the day after that, two days after the fiesta, still everybody's off those for two days after the fiesta. He showed up about four o'clock in the afternoon. We were all hanging out on the side of the house. And um, we were just, I was listening to them. They were laughing in Versailles and I had nothing to do. So I hung out with them for a while. He showed up and he started drinking tuba and he fell down into a seat and just fell out. So five days he drank, for five days he drank himself into a stupa. And then the next day he was up and about. I mean, I would, I, I would not be able to get out of bed for a week. I wouldn't want to get out of bed, but he can do it. He's a, he's a real man's man. He doesn't have orange hair though, that's for sure. Uh-oh. My, my, my YouTube went down again. What a pain in the neck this is. All right. Okay, we're back. A unicorn ear. I'm, I'm missing the point. You want to see a crazy video? This is up. Uh, you're still live. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't shut it down. I was thirsty. I started drinking water and then I started thinking about that orange. I need new bottles. I need different bottles. I'm going to have to work on that. Oh, one ear. Well, oh yeah. Well, that's that's true too. Oh, un I thought un unicorn. I think of like with a a point. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, oh, is that video that flying circus has? You want to see a funny video? Hold on a minute. I'm going to mute this. Okay, here is a video. Flying circus. How come I can't hear sound? Okay, there's the sound. Okay. Watch this video. This is the video of a guy named Caesar. Caesar wanted me to move to Mindanao, and he would give me a young girl to have children with if I gave him my money, my credit card, my bank account, and my possessions here in the Philippines. And, and he would give me rice for life. 
and and each day we would get one serving of pork, bamboo pork, he called it, bamboo pork. So how do you make bamboo pork? Okay, this is tr this is real now. This is okay. This is this is the kind of stuff that I would never do. That other people that like becoming Philippine, oh whatever that guy. I never seen one of his videos, but he will eat the balut. He would eat the worm pork. He would eat the stuff that they eat. Uh, I think I would eat. I don't. I don't know what kind of bugs I would eat. I, I don't know what kind of bugs I would eat. I would gag. I wouldn't be able to eat them. But like they have like a uh, fried scorpions. People eat that stuff or co fried cockroaches. And to me, I would get sick if I ate it. Now, if I had to eat it because I was hungry, then I guess I would eat it. And then I'd get sick, and then I'd have to eat another one. Until, but I, if I had to have something in my stomach. But in Mindanao, in the mountains, where he was going to give me the girl to have children with and have a family, if I gave him all my earthly possessions, and I've seen this guy every year for eight years, every fiesta that he comes to Bahal. How he does it, why he does it, I don't know. His name is Caesar. He, he's trying to recruit me now eight years to go live in a mountain in Mindanao and give him my, all my money, all my earthly possessions, and my bank account and credit card. And in return, I get a woman to have children with, but not this year. This year, he had no women left. No, they're supposed to be never touched women. There were no never touched women. This caused a big problem. Because what he wanted to give me was a ladyboy. Now, that, not the problem, because everybody laughed. So we do this every year. So with the women, and then I'll tell you the story, with the women, they give you all the rice you can eat, and then every day you wake up and you farm the field with rice and tomatoes and beans, whatever they grow there, avocados, whatever they grow in Mindanao. You, you become a farmer, and then they feed you and your girl and your children. But for me, they give you something called worm, bamboo pork, bamboo pork. And they take a big piece of bamboo, like a big bamboo, like that, and they shove a piece of pork inside the bamboo in water. And they put a top on top of the bamboo. And then the worms in the pork, in the meat, they, they come out and they, they eat some of the meat. When you open up the top of the bamboo, you see the worms worming around in the water. And after three or four days, The worms have eaten enough of the meat to make the meat tender. This is true. I'm not, not making this up. I'm saying it really slow so I don't gag. Now, when the meat comes out, they also collect the worms. Well, <laughs> which is another part of the meal, like the dessert. So the meat, <coughs> with the oil, <coughs> the meat with the worms in the pork, <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
That's the, the, the main meal. And then the world. <laughs> the worms are the dessert. I don't know how they, don't know how they cook them. I never got that far. So, they do something. <laughs> they do something with the worms. Now we don't have to watch the video that Flying Circus has on his channel. Because you just saw a new rendition of it. But that's true. That's true. What I just said. And I, and I didn't get to find out what they did with the worms because there was about 12 of us sitting around laughing about Seesaw asking me again. But this year they have no women, only ladyboys. So I don't know if Caesar was telling the truth or not because I asked Guapo Berrio and he said Caesar was telling the truth that he would... He, this, this is how I know he knows that. See, he said to me, "Whatever you do, don't go to Mindanao." When Caesar asks you to go to Mindanao with him, this is years ago. Don't go, because if you go to the mountains, you'll never come back out of the mountains. You'll you might have a woman, but you'll also give them your credit card and your bank accounts and all of that. So. That's true. So, we were talking about the lady boys, and there was like 12 of us, Dominic too, because he speaks English. And we were talking about the lady boys, that you get a free lady boy. If you go to Mindanao, and that caused, well, I, I, I really can't tell you the whole story, but I will tell you this. Everybody started talking about Lady Boys. Everybody. There was, well, there were 12 people, maybe a little bit more, men, all men. And they all started talking about Lady Boys. In the, the porch of Nanai's house, you've all seen the porch. There was one, two, three, four, five, six, six people at the table. I was sitting on the bench opposite the table. Another Caesar, Caesar was sitting behind me, but on, he was standing up behind me where his face was over the top of my shoulder. Because we were talking like this, like face to face. And we were laughing. Oh, God, the, the things that people were saying about ladyboys and who's, who's a ladyboy and what you do with ladyboys. It was just one solid, continuous joke. Everybody was putting in stuff about Lady Boys until one guy lost his mind. He just snapped. Apparently, it hit home somehow, and he lost his mind. And that was the end of the. But he had to leave. He had to leave. He had to leave. But anyway, that guy, he lost his mind. He was he was in on the joke too from the get go. He was laughing and adding stuff to the the ongoing joke, and then he just lost his mind. He was drinking all day too. That's what alcohol does to people. But uh, I'll never forget. That. Neither will he. He'll never forget that day either. And uh, nobody will ever forget that was we, we laughed for hours, hours and hours after the guy lost his mind. Still, people talk about that till this day. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, God, that was funny. Let me go back to the videotape over there. That was a good day. That was probably the best day I had with the Filipino men. And this is the video of uh, me losing my mind after I was talking about the, the worm pork. Look, does that look familiar? Oh, that is a bamboo, and they fry it up quick with the worms. And that's your meat for for the day. And they put the pork with some worms. Oh, oh, it's hot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. Mm -hmm. After three or four days, mm -hmm. when the pork gets mm -hmm. uh, lots of worms in it, and then mm -hmm. they take it out of them. Mm -hmm. oh. Out of the bamboo. And they fry it up quick with the worms. And that's your meat for, for the day. And they put the pork with some worms. I got it. Next year, I'm going to make a video of Caesar with that. He, you know, and this, here's the, the thing that's really funny. Caesar, this year, I said to Caesar, we're going to do a video of you asking me. Might not have a broth. Abraham... Bakara, can you say hi to me? Yeah, I could say hi to you, but I wasn't looking at you. If the video is facing me, if the video is facing the screen and the screen is on another person's channel, I wouldn't even see you. Yeah, hello, Abraham. How are you today? Thanks for stopping by, Abraham Ka Kahari. The, the original... I couldn't hold them. So, so you're still live, says Scott. Only uh, Fazio is tougher than nails. A man has put up. I, I thanks, Scott. Fazio is tougher than nails. A man has put up with the most horribly painful wounds in my legs like molten metal on his skin for 24 hours a day and can still laugh and make it through the day. My, my leg wounds hurt so much, the uh, infections on my legs years ago. It's hard to make you understand what it felt like, but it was really a lot of pain, a lot of pain. Well, I'll tell you how much it was. Um, see, this is what the, the creep, the, uh, when, he said, Fazio drinks alcohol. In my entire life, ever, since I was born, when we went out, when we were kids, 18, 19 years old, get drink a couple of bottles of beer, or even at a bar, uh, a, a disco. I never drank in a bar. I never drank alcohol in a bar, probably in my whole life. In a bar, like sitting at a bar bar, where you, you're at a bar, I don't think I ever got drunk in a bar. I don't ever remember getting... I could say that's not true. But I had to do it once. I had to do it. And and, and it was the talk... All right, so how, what year was that? 19... Had to be after 1988. 
1990, let's say it was, before I moved to the Philippines, before I moved to Florida, I did a thing. I did a thing. And, uh, it wasn't a bad thing. It was just something that I should have an alibi for. So I went to a bar, on, and it was my birthday. So I remember it was my birthday of 19... Ninety, ninety-one, something like that. And I went into a bar, and everybody, a local neighborhood bar, and everybody said, what are you doing in here? I, said, I'm gonna, I stopped in to have a few drinks. You've never been in this. Since I was 16 years old, 15 years, I never was in the bar in my whole life to have a drink. I would walk in to hire men, or paid men, at the end of the day, but I never had a drink in the bar. Anyway... In that bar, I got drunk. So that was the only time I ever drank in a bar in my neighborhood in my whole life. Never drank in there before or after. So I don't drink alcohol because I always operated equipment and I don't like to feel it. But the, the little one, the, the guy in northern Cebu, when I had the wounds on my legs, I drank a lot of alcohol. I would just turn a bottle upside down and drink it, half the bottle. Didn't matter what it was, tequila, rum, chocolate, peppermint schnapps. It made no difference. I'd drink a half a bottle and I'd lay down to go to sleep. Because that would, they won't give you painkillers here. That creep made it sound like I was an alcoholic my whole life. See, I could ask him a lot of questions. But he doesn't have the answers. In fact... Remember what I told you. Watch this. You're going to see this happen. You're going to see him squander his way, cut a path. He won't, he won't stop to answer questions. And if he does, I don't think he will. No, I don't have to worry about that. And, and if he does, he's not going to like the questions that he gets asked. And that yellow streak is going to be going like this. It's going to turn into a yellow flash. Just like the last time I asked them questions. You see what he does? See what he, he's like that on YouTube too. Little fella. You got a big mouth. You're going to have to back it up one day. Sooner or later, somebody's going to ask you to back it up. So anyway, he made it sound like I was an alcoholic my whole life. I worked in a bar for years in in uh, Co Coco Bar, Coco's Bar, and Coconuts Bar and Grill in Key Largo for years. I never had a drink. Worked in a bar for three years. Never had a drink. I had a six pack of Heineken in my refrigerator when I bought my house. And it it, it took. I don't know, eight or nine years, and one day I was in the kitchen, and I heard, I opened up the refrigerator door, and I heard, like that. I'm going, what the heck? Is I thought the compressor, I thought the compressor blew a line, like the the, the Freon, com it was the, the bottle of beer, I bought a six-pack of Heineken's, because I only drank Heineken, and, and, and in eight years, seven years, the bottles were in the in the vegetable bin, but the, the top of the bottle rusted off. So I just cleaned it up, and uh, eventually I drank the other two, or one that was in there, with however many there was. But I had six bottles of Heineken in my refrigerator for eight years. I don't drink alcohol. And, and I would, I'd lived, work, built bars in Key Largo and never had a drink. But that creep made it sound like I was an alcoholic. Because he's a malignant, psychopathic, narcissistic liar. So, okay, so you guys are back. 
I'm going to start gagging, says Scott Delphine. You saw that shit coming. Nah, he's salivitating. He's going to start gagging. That was... That was... The Martin Street, LOL. You guys got a kick out of that. I'm glad that I could help you out with that. That's what it's about, having a little bit of fun, a little bit of truth, a little bit of what the Philippines is all about. And tomorrow, what I'll do... Today, there's nobody out there on the beach. This is where I live, for those of you who don't know where I live. That is the White Sand Beach you're looking at. And uh, that's about 200 feet away from where I am now. So you, you can see the white sand and the boats, uh, the dive boats. So that's the view that I have from my window. Which is why I say I wouldn't, I wouldn't change where I live, even if, let's say that, let's say somebody offered me a house without a view of the ocean, White Sand Beach, where I couldn't just see it from where I'm sitting right now. I would just say, no, thank you. It wouldn't matter how much money they gave me. It wouldn't matter they're going to pay my bills. I wouldn't do it. I lived on the water since I was five years old, where I could look out my window and see a canal or the ocean or deep water, except for two years when I lived in Brooklyn on Cozine and Pine. I would have to go up to the top of the roof of the house, and I did. I had ladders set up to the roof of the house so I could sit out on the top peak of the roof, which was 40 feet high off the ground. I had a, I lived on what would be the third floor. Then there was a 16 foot ladder to the peak of the roof. And I would, I had the ladder secured to the peak of the roof. And that was up 40 feet. And then from there, I could see the ocean, the bay, Jamaica Bay. So if I can't see the water from where I live, I won't live where I want, where. Now, I had to leave live in Brooklyn at in that house for and because I worked for that man and for two years he taught me a trade and for two years I was working I worked only for him nobody could hire me to do like a, put a window in or something like that for two years all I did was work for him he had houses everywhere and he always had work. And whenever somebody moved out of one of his houses, he would paint the entire house, fresh paint. And if the rugs were worn out, we would pull out the rugs. And if the house needed a new stove, we'd just put the stove out on the street. And he would come by and say, what do we need? And I'd have a punch list. And he'd go, okay, here's money. He'd open up a suitcase and he'd give you the money for the what you needed, and it didn't matter how much you needed, it wasn't that was not the issue. The issue was just get the job done. And for two years, I was I worked for him. That's why I lived in that house, and he paid me well, a lot of money. So I'm dying over here, says DNC. The original was legendary. To me, so funny that time. That was the original Flying Circus. That's the original that Flying Circus has up on his channel. And Serval, Servalana, Servil, Servilana, Servalana, M. I'm dying also. Thank you, Servalana. I have some rice and spaghetti noodles. Servalana, too funny. That was. I really was trying not to get sick. I've told that story without getting sick. But today, not so good. I didn't do so well. Want some meatloaf, flying circus? Tears, saliva, and sadness. Brings joy to my, my brings joy to Scott Del Fuego. 
So he's sweetening up the deal with ladyboys. That, you know, I can't tell you what happened with, with that story. Maybe if I ever meet you people in person, I'll bring you next door. And because if I told you what happened, you would not believe me. But if I bring you next door, they will confirm what happened. That's true. If I told you what happened, you wouldn't believe it. And there's a quite, and there were 14 people that will confirm it. By that time, by the time the story ended, there was a whole lot more people involved. <laughs> ah, DNC says, by, hey, didn't Frank have a worm? Maybe the, the islanders are tenderizing him. I have no idea what you're talking about. Hookworm. Oh, that's right. He did. Remember, he talked about having a worm. He did talk about that. I, I remember him talking about that. Too bad we don't have a video of that, like we have a video of that Cheeto factory he got. On Long Tara, have a nice day. On uh, um, um, um Long Tara. Thank you, On Long Tara. Salamat. Calamance, super good live, Mr. Fazio. Some boss content. Thank you, Calamance. I think I'm going to have a Calamance. I think I'm going to have a Calamance. You guys look, let me go get a Calamance. I'll show you how to eat a Calamance. I'm gonna, I'll be back in a moment. I'm not going to. I want to get, I have them all washed and everything already. You know, in Calamansa, if you guys ever come to the Philippines, this is the problem with Calamansa. They only last. Whoa. Whoa. There's goats having at it. Oh, that's the baby goats with the mama goat. See, that's why I like living where I live. Because we have cows, pigs, goats, and the beach, right? Right there. There's the beach, right there. So, the problem with the Calamance is look, let me show you something. See, see this Calamance here? It's like yellow, right? Yesterday that was green. I picked out a kilo of green calamansi, but they only last about a week, and then they start to turn yellow, and by tomorrow, this will be so soft, it will be rot rotten inside. So you gotta, you gotta get rid of the, the ones that are yellow first. So I'll just get rid of this one now. This is 12 calories. Now I didn't eat any foods today. And I've been up since 4 o'clock, well 6 o'clock, on and off. But that's how you eat them. Now these are washed. Well, what I'm going to have to do with this, I'll have to squeeze these. By tonight, I'll squeeze them out, and then I'll freeze the calamansi juice. That you could do. But if these turn yellow and get soft, you could still squeeze them tomorrow, but 
two days from now, this one here will just turn into like a mushy, a mushy substance. And these are expensive a little bit. Not, not, not real expensive. These are 70 pesos per kilo. All right, so that's like a, a dollar 20 a kilo. And, but half of that, of course, is skin. So, but they only last a week. What they do is they take the new ones and they mix them in with the old ones. But yesterday there were no new ones in the market. So you have to take the best of the old. And now at one place at a Dahlia's, where I buy Dahlia vegetables from Dahlia, her calamansi, you put your hand in and it come out with, came out with mush. Some of them were so rotten that she said, tomorrow we get fresh calamansi. I said, what do you do with all of these? They're all, we give them to the hogs so that none of the food goes to waste. But you could have, I could have bought them from Dahlia, but most of them were yellow and ready to turn. By the, today, they would have been garbage. They would have went off. So, calamansi just lasts one week. But if you get fresh calamansi, now these are the mediums. These are, well, these are big. These are medium to big. If you get the small ones, they don't last any longer, but they taste better. These are big and have more seeds. But they're bigger and you get more juice. The small ones, you get less juice, but less seeds. So you get, but they, this is what they had. It took me 10 minutes to pick out a kilo of those from a big batch with rotten ones in there. So you got it. You got to shop. You know you got it, and and they let you pick them out. You don't, they do not ever tell you 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 can't pick. You can pick your own cabbage. You can hit the the side of the the bottom of the cabbage to see if it's got a, a hollow sound to it. You can hit the opo to to, to sound. You can hear it if it's fresh or not. Lion Circus has given me an LOL for something. Oh, man. I see yellow. So Simulacron is in the house, baby. Sis S. Simulacron. Thank you, Sim. Yellow. Sweetening it up with Ladyboy said Flying Circus. Okay, Scott Del Fuego. DNC Human Circus. I think I'd rather have a young... Have wormy pork than a worm. Okay. Can you say hi to me? Hello, Abraham Bakara. Hello. Why not have broth? Both. Oh. D. 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 I'm drinking water with lemon. It's got the lemon. The seeds in the bottom, it's just water with lemon, but it's got a lot of, a lot of uh, pulp in it. That's why it looks like that. Because I squeezed about four lemons in here since last night. Then you got to rinse out the bottle, get the pulp out. S Simulacron. is worm. We were talking about worm pork. Can you make sure this goes to the poor little fella who lost his funds to ladyboys at the bar when he flew into the Philippines for a layover? Oh, my God, we can tell that story. This is the story. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. This is how I heard the story. A guy... Not much of a guy, not much of a man, not really, a man flies into Manila. He flies into Manila. 
And he's got a 12-hour layover. 12-hour layover. And somebody, somebody, somebody says to him, let's go to the city of Manila. I don't know who it was. So they go into a ladyboy bar. Why would you go into a ladyboy bar? I've been in the Philippines for 10 years. It'll be 10 years next month. In December, excuse me, in December 10th, it'll be 10 years. And I've never been in a ladyboy bar. That's the first bar that you want to go to in the Philippines, a ladyboy bar, really. And according to Scott Del Fuego, somebody on Nico's show yesterday said that they would try a ladyboy. And last week on Kevin's show, his host said that he had no problem with ladyboys. Well... If you are interested in ladyboys and I ever have a host on my show, you will probably not be my first choice. But he flies into Manila and he's got, I I think he told, he he tells a lot of stories. Some of them are true and some of them are not true. But the one where he was in Manila, he goes into a ladyboy bar. And I don't know how that works. I've never given a woman money for sex. Okay, let's just be clear on that. I've never been in a ladyboy bar. I have been in bars for um, the wedding thing where you do bachelor parties. I've never got involved with the women in a bar like that. Never. It doesn't interest me. I just, I'll leave while... I'll just sit there and watch. I don't put money in their G-strings. I don't do any of that crap. So he goes into a ladyboy bar, and he doesn't drink, that I believe, but somehow or another, when he's going to leave, he owes them 23,000 pesos, or about, at that time, that would be $500. uh, 23,000 pesos would be about $400 now, but, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how much it is. Uh, well, well, let's just go over here. He's been here five, five years, six years, like that. What is 23,000 pesos? 23,000 To U.S. in what is this is 2023. Let's say 2017. Philippine peso to U.S. dollar exchange rate in May of 2017. This is when the dollar was not worth a lot of money. I remember it was like 39 or something like that, or 42. Philippines peso rate in May of 2017 was $461 in 2017. Now, 23,000 pesos would be just about $420, maybe. So it's like $40, $50 more then than it was now. So he gives, somehow he gets into a ladyboy bar, and then he owes the ladyboy bar 23,000 pesos. Now, I don't know how that's possible. If you're not, if, if you're not getting involved with ladyboys, how can your old ladyboy borrow money? 
if you're not doing ladyboy stuff? That's the big question, Sim. And, and, and the question is a legitimate question. Look, look, I go into a bar, right? I told you in whatever year that was, 1990, I was 35 years old. What I did has nothing to do with why I, well, why I was in the bar. And I sat in that bar until 2 o'clock in the morning. But, but I owed the bartender money because I drank alcohol in the bar. But if I go in that bar a hundred other times to pay people money or to get them out of the bar to go to work or give them a job or offer them a job, I don't owe them any money because I don't have any business with the bar. So when you walk into a bar, I don't know how ladyboy bars work. I know there's something called a lap dance that you can get in a, in a strip club and with, with real women. I know that exists, but I never got a lap dance. I never had a pro, where they say once you go pro, then you'll know, or something like that. I don't know. Linda, Linda was probably, uh, she was the best Christian, couldn't curse in front of her. You couldn't, couldn't, nothing racial. Oh, forget that. And they had to believe in Jesus. And you had to go to church with her once in a while. But Linda. Linda. She would. She would. There was no reason to ever be unhappy or unfaithful to Linda. And Linda would be the woman I would still be with to this very day. Except she had cervical cancer when I met her. When I met her, she had cervical cancer. And um, after about three years, I said to her, let's get married and have children. And she told me, no, I, I, if I have children, I will die. And I, if I could have children. So that was when I was getting ready to move to Florida. So that had to be around 1992. And she, in 1992, she said to me, I'm going to leave now, today, I was, we were at my mother's house, I'm going to leave now, and we're never going to see each other again. She knew she was dying. So, she did die. She died not long after that, weeks after that. So, that girl, she was not a prostitute. She didn't curse. She never had a drink in her life. She never smoked a cigarette, she never smoked pot, she never did drugs, and she died of cervical cancer. But that was probably a better woman than any other woman I ever had as a girlfriend, as a friend, as a confidant. She was my buddy. So, but I would never have sex with a pro pro professional prostitute. But anyway, that guy walks into a ladyboy bar, and somehow at the end of the day, when he's going to get back on his plane to come to wherever he was going, Cebu, I think it was, he owes them 23,000 pesos. How do you owe somebody $400 in five or six hours? What did you do? What did he do for five or six hours? Sim, S. Simulacron, S. Simulacron wants to know. We want to know, what did you do for five or six hours in a ladyboy bar that you owed them. And that was just you, the guy that you went with. How much money did he owe them? You never did say how much that guy owed them. We, we want to know. We, we have questions, and we believe that you should answer our questions considering all the, all the time we spent listening to your worthless diatribes. Sim wants to know what he did. Well, Sim didn't ask, but he, he wants me to make sure to compensate him for some of that 23,000 pesos. But what Sim is really wanting to know is where did those 23,000 pesos go? For what reason? You guys can come on the chat and...
throw reasons on the board. Why, if you walked into a lady boy, a lady, a lady boy bar of all places, if you walk into a lady boy bar, why would you owe them twenty three thousand pesos five hours later? Now I'm being serious. Now I'm not kidding about that. How would you owe if it if it was a, a woman strip bar? And you said you owed them 23,000 pesos. Well, then that's probably because you got something called a lap dance. But what did you do in a ladyboy bar that you had to profess that you were scammed for 23,000 pesos in a ladyboy bar? Why were, you, why were you in a ladyboy bar? What were you do with whom you were doing what with in a ladyboy bar? And why would you be doing anything with anybody in a ladyboy bar that you would owe them money for? You, 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 you tell the truth sometimes that you got scammed for 20, what? It wasn't worth $23,461 for what they did for you there? It wasn't, what was it worth? Was it worth 100? Did they charge you double? Did, did somehow, or maybe you just not so good at math, because we know your math skills are not so good. What is it that they did to you, for you, with you, that you owed them $461 in less than five or six hours? And then they were holding your suitcases hostage. What did we want to know? We want to know. We want to know. What did you do in a lady boy bar? Please tell us now. Was it good for you? Please show us how. If it was good for you, what was it like for the other guy? Please tell us now. Tell us what you did in the Ladyboy Bar. Tell us what you did in the Ladyboy Bar. Tell us why you got overcharged. If you don't do anything in a Ladyboy Bar, how can they charge you money in a Ladyboy Bar? If you're in a Ladyboy Bar, one would have to ask, why were you in a ladyboy bar? Why were you in a ladyboy bar? Why were you in a ladyboy bar? What were you doing in a ladyboy bar? That's what we want to know. What could be worked for $161? Did it involve anything crazy? What were you doing in a ladyboy bar? Were you too lazy to find a woman with a lap dance? Were there any women in the ladyboy bar? Did you check them? And how far did you check them? What were you doing in a lady boy bar? We want to know before we go too far. Was it a lot of fun for you and the other guys? What were you doing in a lady boy bar? Please tell us now. Don't make us wait. Tell us what you were doing in the Ladyboy Bar. Ladyboy Bar. I've never been in a Ladyboy Bar. We want to know what it was like. We want to know what it was like. Do you have video? The photographer's edge. Did you take pictures? Or is it a secret? What were you doing in a ladyboy bar? Please tell us what you were doing in a ladyboy bar. That was some crazy shit, man. That was some crazy stuff. 
I have never been in a ladyboy ball. If someone said to me, let's go to a ladyboy ball, I was going to pass. I'm going to pass. I'm going to take a hard pass on that. But let's just say I was with a group of friends and a couple of them said, let's, let's go to a ladyboy ball. Well, that, those people would, would no longer be my friend. I'm, I might not get mad at them, but our friendship is over. So that clown that Big Kevin had on his show, that was okay with dating ladyboys? Well, I don't know anybody that would be okay with dating ladyboys, but that's not the point. Sis S. Simulacron wants to know if I will get make sure you get this money to help compensate you for being 23,000 pesos poorer that you came at. What were you doing in a ladyboy bar? That's the big question. Just tell us what you were doing. Remember, remember, remember Sidney Portnier, baby. Remember Sidney Portnier. Remember that story? Remember, don't ever talk about Daisy May again. Oh, but didn't you do that? Yeah, you did. Yeah, but you, then you disappeared. So now I'll have to wait for you to come back to tell the Sydney. I have a favorite guess who's coming to dinner story that I like to tell, but I want to I wanna see. I want to know. I want to know that somebody's going to watch the show, somebody that matters to me. So you guys want to throw it up on the screen. What is there to do in a ladyboy bar? And actually, if you know what there is to do in a ladyboy bar, I don't even know that I want to hear that. Side Cash talks. Hello, where are you from? I'm from Howard Beach, Queens, New York City. New York proper, Queens proper, New York. And those are his good qualities. I lost track of the conversation there. Happy Land Spudnik's Manila Tondo. Okay. You are from Happy Land Manila Spudnik's. Okay, well, thank you for stopping by. Man in the Street. I remember that name. One of my favorites was you going... You being dragged around? No, I wasn't dragged around in my truck. I got dragged by the log. I got dragged while I was hanging on to the steering wheel of my truck. I had a big log in my truck. I remember that video like it was yesterday. And then I got the Charlie horse. So. I had a log in the back of my F-250 pickup truck, and I hit the gas. The log was tied on to the rock, a big rock I had. I was building a monument in my yard, a big rock monument, waterfalls. And when I hit the gas, the log was hung up on the bed, the plastic liner, the the the, the plastic liner with, and when I hit the gas it was like a spring it was on nylon it wasn't on a chain and the spring sprung the log back and shot it off the back of the truck and at the same time my foot got stuck between the brake pedal and the gas and it dragged me hanging on to the steering wheel it pulled me across my driveway, which was about 35 feet. I had, I had a big driveway. My driveway was 1,200 square feet of concrete. And it pulled me, and that, when it pulled me, my, my right leg was in, I got a trolley horse in my right leg. That lasted for months. Yeah, I remember that. I didn't get dragged behind the truck. I was dragged while I was holding on to the steering wheel. Had I let go, I might have gone under the truck. 
the truck stopped when it hit the other side of the yard. Been watching you ever since. Cheers, brother. Yeah, I know you didn't mean that in a negative way. That was, I ought to bring that video over to, to this channel. That was quite the video. I had a trolley horse in my leg. I, well, it wasn't a trolley horse. I, I broke the hand. I, I pulled the hamstring in that leg. That was a hamstring. And that took years for that to go away. I don't know how the football players snap a hamstring and go back to playing football weeks later. I have no idea. Clutching Dagger Z. Rabbi Jew Barker, it's me. My hub bar Barvel. You rem if you remember me, Miha Bravo. Miha Bravo, do I remember you? I, I don't. I apologize. I don't. Uh, from, from when I lived, I, I would imagine it was from when I lived in Key Largo. Was it Philippines videos? Because you're asking how's life in the Philippines. I could look at your page. Let's see. I could do that. Let's take a look. Oh, look at this. He's got... No, that's not you. Oh, you're playing my live stream live. Okay, let's see. what. Well, let's see what's going on here. N no, I that was high power vacuum cleaner for home use. I don't remember that name. That bothers me too. That I don't remember somebody's name. All right, so let's go to his page. Oh, you are okay. Clutching daggers. You collect knives. Okay. About? No, I apologize. Clutching daggers. I'll subscribe to you, though. That's all done. Thank you for stopping by. I'm, I'm trying to think about the name. I apologize. DNC, little man actually had two hookworms. Only he peed out of one. <laughs> Side cash. Are there good food out there? Uh, no. Okay. Is there good food in the Philippines? Nothing. Nothing like we have in America. Nothing at all. It's not even, there's no comparison. The only thing that we get here that's good, really good, is what they call lechon, roasted pork. Uh, when they roast the whole hog, they barbecue a whole hog, a whole pig. That is, if it's cooked right, it's delicious. But the chicken here has so many chemicals in it. I haven't had a piece of chicken going on three years. If I eat a piece of chicken, if I buy like a, a one kilo chicken roasted on the spit, because I'm not, I have no roaster. If I bought one, my ankle would swell up this big, from this big to this big. There's so many chemicals in the chicken that it makes my calf muscles blow up to 21 inches from 18 inches. It blows them up like this big in a matter of an hour. 10 minutes, my ankles are this. So you can't, I can't eat any, any, any chicken. They don't sell milk here. You cannot buy milk here. Can't. Not possible. They don't sell whole milk here. They don't sell it. You can buy milk in a plastic, a, a, a wax carton, 
and it's it, it might last five, six months in the refrigerator because it's got so many chemicals in it. They don't sell whole cream. Like if you want whole cream for your coffee, they sell this carnation cream in a, in a can. It's all chemicals. You cannot buy any meat product from a cow. Nothing is worth the price you pay for it. Nothing is worth the time it takes you to cook it. The meat, it would be kind of like eating a, a piece of rubber. Well, I'm, I'm being serious. The best piece of meat that you're going to get is kind of like eating, chewing on a, like a, an old football. It's garbage. And it tastes like garbage. It has no flavor, no matter what you do to the meat. If you cook the meat with a little salt, no, can't eat it like that. You, you can eat it with ketchup, but you got to slice it to where it's paper thin. And that's their main staple. I don't eat rice. I don't eat egg noodles. The eggs are very good, but they also make your ankles and your legs swell up. And the cholesterol put my blood pressure through the roof. So no, the foods here, nothing like America. But pizza, there's a place you can buy pizza. There is a place. Now you gotta understand something. The pizza's 12 inches in diameter, says 13 inches, it's 12 inches, and it's about just the shy of $12 for a 12 inch pie. I could eat two of them and not remember that I ate the first one. And I've done that before. Not since I had my diet, but I've eaten an entire 12 and a half, 13 inch pizza. When I was with John Blaze and his wife, we went to that pizzeria last September. And I think it was September, October like that. And I ate the entire pie. And I don't even remember eating the pie. They had one slice each. I had the other six. And then I had some of another meal. And I, I'm, when I was done, I'm going... I, I just ate like three quarters of a pizza pie. And I don't even remember eating it. And that's how the crust is thin. The meat was delicious. The cheese was imported provolone. The sausage was top, top grade Italian sausage. But there wasn't enough pie to fill you up. And for $12, I want to be full. And, and, and $12 in the Philippines is a day and a half's wages for a construction worker here. So one construction worker making $8 a day would have to spend one and a half days wages to eat one pizza for him and his wife. That would be like an American spending $300 for dinner. And we don't do that. Not a lot of us can do that. I have done it with my parents when I took them out for their anniversary or something like that, but for me, no. So the food here, the answer to your question is the food here is, leaves a lot to be desired. The Zen of the Calamansi. Side cash talks. Thank you for all the smiley faces. Thank you for stopping by. And and he's got a a smiley face, a crying happy face, an angry face, a a hiding face. Let's take a look at these faces close up. I don't see that. All those faces. I like them. I appreciate you getting all those faces to me. 
Oh, yeah, there's a lot of different. A uh, wow face, a ha face, a woo face. Oh, my God face. Thank you very much, Side Cash Talks. Thank you. Salamat. He bought a mule in the Ladyboy bar. That's possible. That is possible. Because, well, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know what you could buy in a Ladyboy bar. I can deal with a small chest, a big nose, even sometimes a little edgy personality on a girl. Gotta stay. Though, raging bone is just a deal breaker. I guess that's just me. Scott, didn't you say that somebody on Nico's show was interested in having a ladyboy or was going to come to the Philippines and do a ladyboy? I, I remember you talking about that this morning. A three-piece set. Ha ha. I, I guy, I got, why well, I guy says. A guy, a guy says. How is that possible for someone that doesn't drink? Yeah, why would... Why would you go into a ladyboy bar, drink, not drink, drunk? Why would you even go into a ladyboy bar? Jesus Christ. We're now we're, we're off topic altogether. How did you get into the Don Bar? Maybe they had a special ride, says Flying Circus. Yeah, okay. Call the baloney pony. I was trying to think of something like that. Flying Circus. The baloney pony ride. Yeah, like like the like in that uh the movie. Remember that movie where they had the the bull? The electronic bull? You in uh it was big in the eighties. I remember I went to a bar in Texas. A uh, Gillies. Gillies bar in Texas. The little fella, hey little fella, have you ever been to the Gilly, Gilly's Bar in Texas? It's a famous, I think it was Gill. it's where they have the platinum records on the wall when you walk in for all the country music singers. And it was a big, big old cowboy bar, man. And, and I walked in there with my DA haircut back in like 1985. A lot of you people, I, I've had quite quite an interesting life, and I, I I didn't have any problems in there at all. I went in there with my friend Tom Schweikert, the father, his mother Colette Schweikert, uh, myself, the daughter Colette, who um she was with us. She was she was only about seventeen or eighteen at the time, but they let her in. And we, we went, that was where they had the electronic bull. The bull riding thing. Let me check, let me check that out. Let's check that out. I had a lot of fun there too. But I, I think it was Gilly's Bar. Texas. It was one where they had all the... Yeah, that's it. It was, yeah, that's right. It was pretty big. It was an inspiration, the movie Urban Cowboy. Right, right. And they had, they had the, they had the, the, you could ride a bull there. Here it is right here. Oh, you're watching that. Okay. What was Gillies famous for? I bet you it was famous for the riding of the bull. And why did they close Gilly's bar? Let's put the, the lot right. That, that I've been in this bar. Wow. I've been to a lot of places in this world. I would have never remembered this place. And now let's look at Gilly's bar, country music, and they had a, a bull. 
And that's why the guy Tom Schweiker took me there because it was famous bar in Texas. There wasn't a lot to do in Texas. Believe me when I tell you, there's not a lot to do. In growing up in New York, when you look back after growing up in New York, you can honestly say there's a lot more to do in New York than there is in any other place in the world for that matter. Let's look up Gilly Bar, Texas, Bull, Bull, Bull Riding. I'm pretty sure that was the place. I went on that bar, too. Mechanical Bull. No Mechanical Bull. Yeah, Ride the Bar, Mechanical Bill, 1980. Okay, here it is, right here. I know I was on that bull. No Mechanical Bull. Okay, yeah, there was a Mechanical Bull. He would go on to contribute the know-how and patent for a Mechanical Bull. Gilly would bring his band. They closed the deal with a handshake and renamed the bar Gillies. I'm pretty sure I was on that bolt. Yeah. Not a lot of people could say they rode... Gillies. I know I rode a mechanical bull, bull one time, and I think it was in that bar. But I do rem and it had, there were records as you walked in, when you walked into the front of the store. Now, the, the little fella, he'll say that I'm making this stuff up, because I, I can't prove. They had, right, let's look up Gillies Bar. Right here, Platinum, Platinum Records. Uh, gold Records, Gold Records on Walls. W. There was a lot of famous people that... Maybe... Yeah, I don't know. The gold records were there. I saw them. And the platinum records, I don't want to spend a lot of time with that. But I'm pretty sure that's where they were. Why would I make that up? So, Jonesy, pull out the doll, Mike. The doll. Hello, Mr. Obama. How are you today? The little fella, he gets upset that I have an Obama doll and a Trump doll. He gets upset about it. See, he has no personality. He has no personality. No personality. No personality. The little fella got no personality and doesn't have any Obama dolls. He tried it once with a doggy doll. He made himself look like a fool. He tried it once or twice and got rid of the dog for good. In fact, he's been known to get rid of dogs. If Jack Thompson was here, he would tell you how. But he's never been to Gilly's Bar and Grill, and Michael Fazio has. Mr. Obama, Mr. Obama, Mr. Obama, doll. The, the Obama doll. Pull out the doll. The doll. And I knew exactly which doll he meant. Because I'm up on my dolls. Riding the baloney pony is expensive. That's why he went into the... Then the ladyboy bar. Did the little fella go too far? In the ladyboy bar. Did... The little fella go too far in the ladyboy bar. 
Did the little fella go too far? Did the little fella go too far in the ladyboy bar? How far? How far? How far? Are we talking Hershey's Highway from one end to the other? Are we talking around the world? Did he get a free Hershey's Highway? Did he get a pass? Of, of that free pass Did he get a free pass Was his pass taken care of How far did he go In the lady boy bar We want to know what he did In the lady boy bar How far did he go how far did he go? Did it make him grow when he was in the ladyboy bar? That's some sick ass stuff, man. So, okay, so we have all the things you need to know about me and ladyboy bars. One, I'm never going to be in a ladyboy bar. I've never been in a ladyboy bar, and I'm never going in a ladyboy bar. Number one. Number two, if I ever did walk into a ladyboy bar by accident, I would walk right out of the ladyboy bar. They would never hook me for 23,000 pesos or 23 pesos because I would say, whoa, this is not the place I want to be. I thought this was a bar. I wouldn't even walk into a bar where they do lap dances in the Philippines. So when you're in the Philippines, at night, when you're walking down the block, this is something else you should know. There'll be a guy standing outside of a door or... In, in Bahal, we have these places here in Bahal. And he'll be standing outside of a door. And he'll say to you, Here's a flyer. Um, if you want a massage, there's and they'll they'll be like the massage parlors are usually on the second floor. Now I know that because there's a massage parlor in right in the same building, right next door to my dentist's office, but it's on the second floor. So um, I never been in there, but that I know there's one there because that's where my dentist is. So. But at night, there'll be people all over the street standing right in front of a door telling you you can get a massage here and it's a full body massage and you could get the different type of endings that they have. But I would not go into one of those places. I, what is to prevent them from, from giving you a knockout drug and taking your wallet and your credit card. What, what is to prevent them from doing that? Nothing. You're, you're laying down on their, their workout bench, whatever they have, whatever it's called. Um, what's to prevent them from just knocking you out and taking your money? And you just wake up a few minutes later and you wouldn't even know that you were knocked out with those knockout drugs. You get knocked out, they just take your money or half your money. What are you going to do? Say to the cops, I was here and this is how much I had 500, I had a thousand pesos in my wallet, half of it's gone. Cop is going to say, Well, what are you doing in a massage parlor to begin with? They're not going to care. So don't go in a massage parlor. To Sir with Love. That was another Sydney Portnier movie. That's right. Side Cash Talks. No, Alo never showed me his face. I don't, you know what? I don't think he ever is gonna either. I, he said after the court case was done, him and I would get together. Court case is not done, and we never met in in real life. 
he might. I mean, if he did, I would not take a picture and I would not take a, a video or anything like that. I would just know what he looks like. I would never I would never betray a friend. And Aloe's been a good friend. So no. Ski master, skit master. I ate your truck. It was not tasty, bro. Okay. Zach Lopez. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing okay, Zach Lopez. Thanks for asking. How are you doing? Urban Cowboy. The movie says Flying Circus. Keep talking, Mike. Get the kettle running. Right, Deborah Winger and John Travolta. That's right. It's all coming back to me now. Is... Gilda short for Gillies. No. Gillies was the name of some guy that was an entrepreneur. Something that had to do with making the mechanical bull. Did I say Trump? Flying Circus loves Trump. Well, Trump is the best. Trump's your only option to bring in the New World Order. He might bring it in a little slower than most other people. He's going to bring it in, though. He's going to usher in the New World Order just like he ushered in the lockdown. Jonesy Jones says, Fort Bragg. And Kraken says, hi. Wow, there's a lot of people on here that I've never heard of before. Well, thanks for stopping by. Thank you for that. So let's see. I, I've been sitting here now for at least an hour talking. I haven't used the restroom yet. I've only drank one one liter of water, one calamansi. Got to get those seeds out of there today. Okay, Jonesy Jones, thanks for stopping by. You know what I'm going to do? Mickey Holly owned volleys. I'm going to, tomorrow, if it doesn't rain in the morning, this morning it was looked like it was going to rain, said rain. I don't have to go to the city. I don't have to go to I might I might I got a load in my phone. If the if they're having uh in the morning sometimes they have the the boats come in. There's the very slow time of the year now. You don't see a lot of divers this time. And come December, there's going to be a thousand people a day past the house. Today, I don't think I saw 50 or 60 people all day. I didn't look that much, but this place is jumping. The, now that the economy picked back up, if they don't have another catastrophe, this place has a lot of people up going going. The neighbors are always walking back and forth, but the dive site, there's three, three, three huge dive centers on my block. Big, big dive centers, like 84 rooms, 32 rooms, and like 18 or 22 rooms from, it was 12 rooms five years ago, now it's like 18 or 22 rooms. And here, in the, in the Korean hotel, you have to be Korean to rent a room in the Korean hotel. They won't rent it to a, a foreigner, a white person, or a Filipino. Only Korean. You have to speak Korean. I thought that was interesting. I don't care one way or the other. But they will I because I wanted to when Daisy came with her sister to take care of me from when I had my operation. 
I wanted to rent a room. I and I know the the manager of the hotel was my neighbor and lives next door to me. I said, I want to rent a room. How much is it? She goes, We don't rent rooms to white people. That's what she said. I said what do you mean you don't rent no, you have, do you do you speak Korean? I said, no. She goes, then we cannot rent you a room. We only rent to Koreans. Okay. I went across the street and rented a room across the street. For half the price. Less than half the price. But it didn't have a pool. And it, it had air con, though. It was a nice place. But... All right, everybody, thanks for stopping by. I'm going to let you guys say goodnight to each other. Thank you very much for, the, for all the comments and the camaraderie and five hours and five minutes of the little... Hey, hey, what happened to your channel, dude? You can't, you got to be able to take a joke. You got to run with the punches. Oh, that was a bad... That was a bad... That was a bad analogy, running with the punches. Running away from the punches would probably be a better analogy for you. And all that. Oh, God, you were funny in that last video that the fake channel has up on their video. The one that's in my playlist. You were one funny guy. The comments, God, you're a funny dude, man. Oh, God, and also the one with me and Warren. Well, you just wait. You just wait. There's going to be some questions. Going to be some questions. That's going to happen. And there's nothing against the law asking somebody a question. Remember that. Gillies County. Mickey, Mickey Gilly. Yeah. Flying Circus. Let's take a look. Uh, Gillies Bob. Here it is right here. No mechanical bolt. Why does it say no mechanical bolt? I don't know why it says that. Urban cowboy. I think maybe they took the mechanical belt, bolt out of the bar because so many people got hurt. Gilly's Bar, Texas, Mechanical, M-E-C-H-A-N-I-C-A-L, Bull, yeah, he did have the Mechanical Bull. Okay. Yeah, that's where I wrote it. That was the only place I ever wrote a mechanical bull in my life. I didn't like it. It's not easy. And you could get seriously hurt. I'm pretty sure that was it. Mickey Gelly admits he wasn't keen on the idea of installing a mechanical bull at his namesake Hunky Tonk on the outskirts of Houston, Texas. By the way, Houston, Texas is a giant, huge slum. Nor is he shy about admitting how wrong he was. That rodeo training device transformed Gilly's club into a cultural force. Okay. So that was where the mechanical bull was. The bull was never meant to be an entertainment establishment like ours. I thought it was a mistake, but it turned out to be a blessing. Without the mechanical bull, we would have never gotten that film with John Travolta. That's right. Every night there was a line for the mechanical bull. I, I, that's where I wrote it. And I don't have a picture of that, but I do have a, a good memory of what was, yeah, that had to be the place where the records were as well. Uh, or there was another, so anyway, 
Um, my uh, friend who took me there, it was the guy I grew up with, uh, his father. He, Tom Schweikert, he was the guy who took me to the hockey games. He had tickets for Madison Square Garden for hockey. And we were right on the front row. I don't remember what, where it was. But it was right on the, what they call the boards. And the boards. Tom took us. Had it not been for Tom Schweikert, I would have never seen a hockey game. Except on TV. And I don't watch sports on TV, so... Go into a hockey game. That's a whole different story altogether. That's exciting. I think we may have gone to eight or ten, seven hockey games. He was a fireman, and the fire department got tickets. They got like six tickets. So I would go with uh, Eddie and Tommy, Tom Schweikert, Tommy Schweikert, the son. James Schweikert, and probably James Newton, because we were all children's friends of children. And he would take us there, and he had the front row seats, and then the seats behind the front row. Tom, Tom was responsible for having of us learning a lot of stuff. He was a cool dude. Tom was the man who made us come in and watch the fake landing on the moon so that we would have something to remember for the rest of our lives. We all thought it was real at the time, but now we know it's not real. But he made us come in. We were playing stickball in front of the house. And he goes, come on inside. And he came out into the street and brought every person on, in the street that was playing stickball into the house and made us watch the moon landing. It was just getting dark anyway, so the game was over. But we did do that. And we all had to watch it. And, and I remember it till this day, all sitting around watching the men land. He said that you'll remember this for the rest of your life. And we did. It's something that you remember. The same thing with President Kennedy got shot. They brought a TV into the room and all the, the kids in, in sixth grade, I think it was, fourth grade. Mrs. Sanders was my fourth grade teacher and my sixth grade teacher. What would that have made it? Died in 63. So I was in fourth grade, fourth grade. And Mrs. Sanders, she made us watch that. Mrs. Sanders, Mrs. Savarese, and maybe I think Mr. Barris's class, they, they packed us in to watch the, uh, it was right after President Kennedy got shot. It's funny how you remember stuff like that. Unless your brain is addled from doing drugs and alcohol, then you don't remember stuff like that. Just like the like, let's say you went to a ladyboy bar, right? And and all of a sudden, six hours later, you're leaving the ladyboy bar, and they say, "Oh, wait, whoa, wait, you owe us twenty three thousand pesos." And now, you give them the twenty three thousand so you can get your suitcases back because you got to catch a plane. But now, when people ask you why were you in the ladyboy bar, and what did you do that you lost twenty three thousand pesos? And you can't remember? Could be because you drank too much alcohol. Even though you say you don't drink alcohol. Could be. Could be something else. Could be some other substitute. Alcohol substitute like caffeine or tea. Green tea will addle your brain as well. Everybody knows this. All right then.
All righty, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for... You know what I forgot to ask people to do? If you're here and you didn't do it, see if you could push the thumbs up or thumbs down button. Thumbs down is just as good. I wish they still showed it to you. Flying Circus says, I rode... You rode a little man in Texas, Flying Circus... Let me see if I can catch up here. Flying Circus says, I rode a little... Oh, you rode a bull. Wow. I knew that you didn't ride the little man. Although, the little man has probably been ridden hard and put away wet. Expensive sausage bombers at the Lady Boy Bar. So, what, what did six... Cause I wouldn't even... In my whole life, I don't think I've spent six hours in a bar. Total. Even, well, that night that the thing happened, that I went into the bar, uh, the thing happened. I got, went home and took a shower. I might have got to the bar around 10 o'clock. And the bar closed at 2 o'clock, so I couldn't have been there for... I don't think I ever spent... Now, in a discotheque, I've been in discotheques for five, six hours, maybe. The Ritz, we used to get to the Ritz around 9 o'clock, and it would close at midnight, 1 o'clock. What would you spend all day in a bar for, anyway? I don't know. It's crazy stuff. So Flying Circus did not ride the little man. He rode a mechanical bull. Thanks for clearing that up, Flying Circus. All right. Levi, Jesus loves you. All have a great day and night. Thank you, Levi. 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 Is anybody? I know what a Levi. Levi are God's chosen. The Levites were in charge of the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. The Levites, yeah? Am I right about that? The little fella probably. The Levite. Hours after the bar closed, in the bar, of course. But after the bar closed is not exactly the same thing. After hours, in tooties. Oh, God, I wish you guys could experience tooties. Tooties Bar and Grill. I was talking about Tooties one day on YouTube, going back around 2010. And this guy said to me, on, on YouTube, it was a video. It was, there was no live streams back then. He said to me in, in uh, the comments something about you never been in Tootie's Bar and Grill. In the basement of Tootie's Bar and Grill. You, you could go into Tootie's upstairs, but you could not go into Tootie's without private invitation. So it was, wasn't that much of a big deal, but stuff went on. They had card games down there and gambling and stuff like that. So I said to him, give me your telephone number. <laughs> Turns out that guy and I were good friends as children. And we both grew up in Howard Beach. And uh, we, we never did see each other again. But he, he asked me, are you the Mike Fazio that lives over by the bridge? And I said, yeah. And then... When he told me who he was, I remembered him as well. But we never were in Tootie's Bar and Grill together. We were just in Tootie's Bar and Grill. And Tootie's Bar and Grill, there was Tootie, who was probably in his 70s, who cooked. This place was a, a, an old bar from the 1800s. And you would go there, and 
there was not a lot of fights there or anything like that. It wasn't it wasn't that kind of a bar to have fights, but all the all the bent nose guys in the neighborhood, they all hung out there. Some upstairs, but most of them downstairs. So you, you couldn't go downstairs unless you were invited to go downstairs. But that's why the guy said to me that you were never downstairs, because he knew that you weren't allowed downstairs unless you knew the people downstairs. You know, you were allowed to go downstairs. That was just something funny that happened on YouTube. So we talked for a while. We talked after that. Then after that, after 2010, 2012, where I got ready to move to the Philippines, we lost touch. But Tootie's was an experience. The, the things, the gambling, it was my first experience at gambling. Sometimes my dad would walk into the bar and uh, him and Tootie would shake hands. My dad knew Tootie when my dad was a little boy. When my dad was 17, Tootie was in his late 60s, early 70s when I was 17. When my dad was 17 and he hung out in Tootie's. So it was like, I don't know who owned Tootie's before Tootie, but maybe Tootie's father did. And my father's father hung out in Tootie's bar. It was an old bar. It was from the 1800s. And Tootie's son... And I forget his name. He was a, a detective, a policeman, a real a real police detective, not not a fake one. And uh, I he was a pretty cool guy. Now that guy was he was a pretty cool guy. Tootie's Bar and Grill. I forgot his name. My father told me. When I was at the bar, he said, do you know who that guy is? I said, yeah, that's Tootie's son. He goes, don't ever, don't ever cross that guy. My dad was telling me the truth, too. He, would, he, he didn't argue with people. He was really tough. He was a really tough man, really tough. And he was a big man, too. He said, he will, he'll beat the shit out of you and like, Three or four seconds. He'll monkey you up pretty bad. I forget. Let, let's see if we could find Tootie's Bar and Grill on the internet. Might as well, right? Talked about everything else. Tootie's Bar and Grill. It's got to be on the internet. Got to be. T U D I E S. Bar. At Liberty Avenue. Queens. If that if that place if that shows up, that would be amazing. No. It did close down in the seventies. Maybe I spelled it wrong. It was like 89th Street. 89th, 90th Street. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Could be with a Y. I Tootie's Bar, Liberty Avenue. Let's try that. Rudy's Bar. No, it ain't Rudy's. Eighty-eight. I said eighty-ninth Street, right? Yeah. Okay. I was wrong by one block. It was eighty-eighth Street, right there. Eighty-eight nineteen, which would make it eighty-ninth Street. Okay. There was even a toilet. And it had shit hanging from the ceiling, too. I remember that part of it. Let's take a look. Yeah, it was stuff from going back into the into the 1800s. 
Wow, boy, that this place, that's a trip, man. Queens may have... The little man, the little man doesn't have memories like this. Queens, Queens, in Queens, many bars have come and gone. One was Tootie's of Ozone Park an institution and treasure in South Queens for many decades. In the 1940s, Tooties began to gather up and display memorabilia, long before it was fashionable to decorate a bar or restaurant with such items. As the years rolled by, just about everything you could imagine ended up somewhere in the bar at 8819 Liberty Avenue. There was even a toilet seat hanging from the ceiling, and I remember it. If you could name something that wasn't there, you'd get a free drink. The famous slogan of the bar's owner, Tutti Samosi, Sam was if you're sick of living and don't know how to die, come down and give Tutti's bar a try. The Samosi family was one of the oldest in Ozone Park. John Samosi was an embalmer who lived at 94th Street with his wife Concetta. Other Simone's family members were grocery workers and countermen. Wow. At one point, a customer literally sawed a chunk of the bar off and took it home because he loved the place so much and wanted a piece of it. Since its closing, many other businesses have tried on this corner but fell. You can still see the phrase, meet me at Tootie's, painted on the side of the old bar's building at Liberty Avenue Subway Station. A photo of it appears on the Forgotten New York website. Tootie's Bar and Grill. Baby. So that that's another story the freak will say that I made up, right? And if I could bring you there, and it was still open, and we could talk to the sun or anybody else, I could prove it to you. Wow, that's there's some memories going on there. And that was the upstairs. There was stuff hanging from the ceiling downstairs as well, but upstairs, I guess I guess they're right that that wasn't common for people to hang stuff in the at that time. Hey, T.C. Michigan. Hey, little fella, don't go away. T.C. Michigan, don't go away. Hey, T.C. Michigan, I owned property up in uh, Holiday Hills. Uh, up against state land where Holiday Hills, you can confirm this. I don't know. In Holiday Hills, there was a road it was an old fire road back in 1990 when I bought my property and the fire road the fire road went from Holiday Hills to Traverse City and I bought property right somewhere dead center there was about five houses on the road back in the 90s but if you're from Traverse City you could confirm that road if they said it was going to have a a paved road going through there but we sold the property before the paved road went through, but Holiday Hill Road, okay. I don't even know if it had, I don't even know, yeah, I don't even know if it had a, a name. I, all I know is that I went there, I went to, I, there was a guy named Trudy, Trudy LaRose. T-R, Tootie's and Trudy, almost the same name. Trudy LaRose, T-R-U-D-Y. Trudy LaRose was the land management guy. And he was in charge of the land management. We were in, if you remember, 
the you and I bar. You and I, there was the you and I, and there was the railroad bar or the whistle stop bar, something that had to do with the railroad. So Trudy, and I was at a bar. I had seen the property that day, and I, I told the real estate agent, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to bring you back the money tomorrow. And Trudy, so I'm in this bar, the you and I. We're in the you and I bar. It's right off, I don't remember, wasn't, it wasn't First Street. I think it might have been First Street. You know the Kent Bank, the Kent National Bank? That's not far from the you and I on First Street. There's a whole community there now. Okay, so the U and I bar was, that's on Front Street, right? Front Street was right. Kent, the Kent Bank, was on Front Street too. Front and First, I think, if I remember correctly. I had a bank account there for a long time, many years. Front Street, right? And the U and I was right down the block from. We remember the, the 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 fudgies, the the, what what did they call us? Fudgies. The, the Taurus fudgies, the, where they made the chocolate. Remember that? The chocolate factory there. And when you bought chocolate, you were a fudgy. And that's, they knew that you were new to the town. Fudgies. And so the you and I, I'm sitting in this bar, and, and this guy is talking to me. And we're just talking. And he goes, what are you doing here? So I told him, I don't know how old you are. But I'm the fella that bought TC Michigan, Traverse City, Michigan. I bought the I bought the Dragon barge from the coal dock. I'm the person that bought the barge from Mike Wills, the uh, owner of Four Winds Boat. Uh, Four Winds Boat. Mike Mike Wills was the owner of Four Winds. I know that closed down, but I'm the guy who bought the Dragon and brought it back to New York. You might have played on it if you were if you're near my age as a kid. So we're in the bar, and he says, "What are you doing here?" I said, "Well, I was looking at I'm looking to buy property." So he goes, "Where is it?" So I had the directions to the bar, and he goes, "When are you going to buy the property?" I said, "Tomorrow." He goes, "Buy the property, buy it, buy it." He says, "You buy the property." And we'll get you a house. We'll get you plans to build a house for the property tomorrow. You bring me back the papers. So the next day, him, I go to the UNI, and he's there. And he, somehow we had pizza. I don't know who had the pizza. So there's a pizza box on the counter. He took out a pen and a paper, and we started drawing on the pizza box how big I wanted the house, where on the property I wanted it. And he goes, okay, come into... Now, he, he, he didn't tell me that he was in charge of land management that night. He said, that's a good place to buy property. You buy the, buy the property, we'll get you up. We'll get you... The next day, we draw out the plans on a pizza box for a little, little shell of a house, about 22 by 22. And he goes, okay, this is what you want. He goes, come in tomorrow. We'll get you the permits. He was in charge of Traverse City Land Management. The surveyor had already surveyed the property, and it was all done in a matter of 48 hours. And then him and I became good friends. We would go ice fishing together. Loved the you and I bar on Front Street. I have a good memory. That was a, hey, Traverse City, Michigan. I don't mean to be disrespectful in any way. Traverse City was, I don't really want to mention too many people's names. I'd have to ask you how old you are before I could mention names of people that you might know, but Tracy LaRose was the land manager. You could look that up in your records there. Awesome. Mackinac Brewing Company closed. Okay, that was Fudgies, yep. 
fudges. If you bought chocolate at the, there was a cho a place to buy chocolate right next door was a high-end jewelry shop. I had a lot of jewelry custom built there for me at that time when I had a lot of money. I had custom jewelry built two doors down from the fudgies. So how old are you? 45. Okay, you would not know Paul or you would not know Jamie. Jamie, Jamie was in a wheelchair, but he was big into shooting gun. He was in a wheelchair. I forgot his last name. I should. Bro, Paul. Paul lived up by the airport, up the up the hill. When you left, when you left the lake, the big, the, the road up the hill, and then at the top of the hill was the airport. Uh, not Alpina. We called it something something International Airport. It was outside of. Traverse City proper. I forgot the, the airport was just it was a 10 by 10 shack with a telephone in the shack and a, and a, a, a loose leaf, not even a, a, a black notebook where you signed in if you were going to fly and then we had the ultralights up there. It was where the ultralights take off and we had the ultralights right there. You just went into the hangar and you would just take the ultralight that you were going to use for the day out of the hangar and go fly. And the only reason for the, the book was so that people knew that you were flying. And if you didn't come home, they could look for you. I don't know if that airport, that airport is still there. The miners, yes, the 46, the jewelry miners north. That was a high-end jewelry shop. What a, what a cool guy. I live in the Philippines now. Nothing like Traverse City. Nothing, nothing like that. Nothing like TC, Michigan. So you guys out there that are going to watch this live stream, I just rattled off the Kent Bank, Front Street, Fudgies, you and I, the Miners Bar, or something like that. I don't remember the second bar's name because I stayed at the you and I. And, and and the long road that goes up the hill. And that place, that was in 1990. Traverse City was the most, that was the most beautiful town in Michigan, as far as I'm concerned. And I've been everywhere in, up uh, in the, I've been to the UP. I've been everywhere from the UP up in the UP where, no man's land up in the UP where 20 miles and all you'd see is pine trees on either side. And uh, Traverse City was a big logging community back then. Holiday Hill Road. Right. That's it. At the top of the hill, sir, ski resort. Then up further is apartments. Well, there were no apartments in the 90s up there. Holiday Hill Road. That's it. Up that big road. I rode my bicycle. Macalonia now really in Antrim in Motel. Uh, the only motel I would remember the name of was the Knights Inn. The Knights Inn. Uh, it was in... TC proper. That's a big hill. I rode my bicycle down, and I I had a car running behind me. My friend Paulie, I think I got the bicycle up to close to sixty miles an hour. It was brand new. It was a brand new Raleigh MT three hundred, brand new with uh, knobby, little knobby tires, not the big knobby tires. I never did that again. I did it once. Nights in Whitening Hotel downtown. That's a yeah, the Nights in. You know what I used to do for the Nights in? I knew the 
the manager there at the night center was a, in fact I dated her for a long time she was my friend's ex-wife we'll call him his ex-wife so I dated her so I would go to the Holiday Inn and I would rent it but then I would stay there I might rent it for two nights and I'd stay there three or four nights then I would go, where else did I go? I went, well, my friend Paulie had a house at the top of the hill. I forgot the name of the, the town he lived in, but I remember the area. It was not a town. I remember there were alfalfa fields with like 700 deer. When you'd wake up in the morning, you'd look outside, you'd see deer, moose, and... Uh, Maybe two or three hundred deer would be there in the morning eating food, breakfast. And then we would go out and get fresh, fresh kill. Nobody. I bet Big Hill. Wow, that is so cool talking to somebody from Traverse City. And, and now the people, see a lot of the people on YouTube, they think I, I make these stories up. There's a little man. He's of a little stature. He's a frail little fella. He thinks everything I say is untruthful. Now, here, how would I know Front Street and, and all the bars and Mike Wills from Four Seasons Boat Docks and the Coal Dock? You know the Coal Dock is there. I know the Coal Dock is there. Now, you would not have seen the Dragon at 45. I took the Dragon out of there in 1988. So you would be... You would have been like five or six years old. Cold, the cold dock. Cold, cold dock. Or the cold dock. Yeah, okay. The pier. The old waffle sheep pier. Al Capone used to stay there a block from the UNI bar and then, you, and then a block from Union Street Station. Wow. Al Capone. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so this little fella, he he thinks I make up these stories, but that is so cool. So I I built that little house of mine up there. It it just had it had a an outhouse. It was just a shell of a house, and then I sold it for quite a large profit about three years later and uh, it was I think I paid 30,000 for the property all in and it was six acres of land backed up against the, the the fire road went from Holiday Hills to Traverse City and on one side of the road at at some point the road was backed up against state land that's the part that I bought and right over that state land that I bought was the 200 foot, 300 foot electrical towers. And Paulie, my friend, said, what are you, crazy? You're going to get electromagnetic waves. I'm going, dude, that land is backed up against 55,000 acres of state land. And on the electrical tracks where the towers went, it went into the woods like 20 miles and and the state of Michigan groomed that path no trees and just grass and you could ride a snowmobile back there 20 miles and not see a tree where the rest of it was forests and lakes and ponds that road that you could go on the uh, underneath the towers was all groomed and level and no waterways that was really cool you could go deer hunting bear hunting moose hunting although i never i'm not a hunter the white whitening hotel i don't remember that the name holiday hill road it's still state land that's why I bought it. That's right. And so these people on YouTube, 
they think I make up these stories and I, and, I, and I never did the things that I say I did. And I've told this story before about having 50,000 acres backed up against state land. I don't know how many acres it was. It was 50 miles or 50,000 acres, but it was just one section that was for sale and I bought the whole six acres that ran. It was two, two lots. It was one lot was on the side of the road that the state land was on and the other lot the other three lots were across the road. It was six acres. Six acres were up against the state land and six and three acres were up against the state land and three acres were on the other side of the road. But it was all underneath the electrical tower. That's why no one wanted it. That was pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. So, yeah, these, so that's what they think. A lot of these people think I lie about. I never lie about this stuff. Hey, little fella, I wasn't lying about Traverse City. Little fella, feel left out, do you? Maybe you could get a... So, moving on, there's a Burger King before you get to Holiday Hill Road. You know what that used to be called? At the bottom of Holiday Hill Road, I think it was Tom's, T-O-M-S, Tom's Grocery Store. And I remember that because of Tom's Toothpaste, which had nothing to do with Tom's. But that's where we bought our groceries. And Tom's Food Market. Right. Tom's Food Market. And that was right at the bottom of the hill. And we would go down there. And in the wintertime, the only way to get food was with the snowmobile and everybody had a snowmobile my buddy paul he was such a cool guy he he had a tractor he gave me a 1970s mercedes benz four door to ride around in when i was up there he had a pool on the property we had a six or eight person jacuzzi and at the time we had the mayor, the district attorney, the judges from Traverse City, Michigan, were all friends with my buddy Paul and half the local police officers. So it was pretty cool. It was, it was a great time to live in Traverse City, Michigan. East Bay. And you know where where we would eat when well taking a girl out to dinner? The the bears the Great Bear Lol what is the name of the Great Bear Golf Course? The Great Bears Golf Course. There's a a very high up restaurant at Great Bear. I think it's called Great Bear, the golf the golf place. And there's a there was like a 10 story high or 8 story high. It was a restaurant overlooking the Great Bear Country Club and if you wanted to impress a girl, that would be the place to go. It was the only place to go really. That and on the water there was a place I forgot the name of it the Great Bear Country Club Grand Traverse Resort and the Great Bear Golf Course. Grand Traverse Resort. That's what it was. Yeah, that one that's way up high. I got to tell you, that place, you bring a, a woman there for dinner, you were hooked up, man. You were hooked up. Turtle Creek Casino. That I don't remember. I don't remember. I, I don't gamble, so I would not remember something like that. Lebron Sands Casino. I, I don't know if there was casinos up there when I was there. And and the name of the bar that I met the owner of Budweiser's Budweiser sold beer. The person who sold the beer cans to Budweiser 
His name was Bob. And his great-grandfather started the Ball Mason Jar Company. The Ball Mason Jars, B-A-L-L. And then from there, he started making beer cans. And he was the first person that made the beer cans for Budweiser, and then he made every beer can after that. So I'm in a bar. I think it was it was the, the name of the bar was had it was had a fish. Uh, walleye Bar and Grill, Walleye Bar and Grill, Sturgeon Bar and Grill, something like that. And it was right up on a lake, and and it was a beautiful bar and grill. And The I, that's cool. I I ha that this is cool. They have the Budweiser plant there. Yeah, that's where they make the cans. So I'm up there. I'm in this bar. It could have been the sturgeon or the walleye because we went. We used to go walleye fishing, but there was also a bar that was. It had a big fish. So I'm in the bar, and I'm talking to this fella named Bob, and Bob says to me. It's raining, and it's probably, it's like September, because we just closed up the pool at Paulie's place. We just finished closing up the pool. It, was an, it had a name of a fish at the bar. It was a very famous bar. It was famous for up there because it was one of the few bars that were around. So Bob, Bob says to me, what do you do? And I told him I... Bought the bought bought Barge Dragon and I built bulkheads and decks and docks, and he goes, well, how do you know Paul? I said, well, Paul and I fly ultralights, and he says, oh yeah, Paul is my friend, and I, I didn't think anything of it, so it, we had Paul and I had just closed up the pool that day, or that those few days we put the inner tubes in, put the cover on the pool. And it was getting cold. It was September. It was my birthday. I know I was up there for my birthday because that's how I spent my birthdays in Michigan. And he says to me, you want to go flying tomorrow? And I'm going, well, yeah, I'd, I'd like to go flying tomorrow, but the weather is going to be bad. And he, he tells me, don't worry about the weather. Meet me at the airport in the morning. We'll have breakfast. If nothing else, we'll just have breakfast. So I, now not not the airport where the ultralights were, in Traverse City, Traverse City Airport. So I said to him, okay. And we, we had a few beers. Apache Trout and Grill. Cherry, Cherry Capital, right. Cherry Capital Airport, right. The, the Cherry, I won... I have my Cherry Festival badge, the little black badge that you'd get when you go to the Cherry Festival. I won something there, not much, but I won, I won one of the prizes at the Cherry Festival. The Apache Trout and Grill. Mike Dowdy, this fella here, you gotta listen to the last hour of this video, Michael. You've heard me talk about Traverse City and Michigan that I had land backed up against state land. This fella, T.C. Michigan, knows the road that I had the land on, confirmed that I had the land backed up against state land, which I know you would never doubt. But then he confirmed all the names of the bars and the restaurants and the fudgy factory where they sold chocolate, everything that I ever said about Traverse City. Because you know how Frail says that I'm a liar, right? Well, this man just confirmed everything I ever said about Traverse City, Michigan. And I'm telling him the story about a man named Bob that I met in a bar that had a fish, the name of a fish, in the bar. So the fellow says to me, we'll go flying in the morning. I'm talking to Michael now. The Cherry Festival, yeah, every year. Holiday Hill Road. Mackinac Island Fudge. Fudgies, fudgies, yeah, fudgies. 
So I said to Bob, okay, but it, the weather's not good for flying because we flew. We were, we had a Buccaneer 2 with a, an 80-horse Rotax engine on it. We had a Pterodactyl with a 40-horse Rotax engine on it. And we had a, the Pterodactyl, and we had another ultralight with a front canard with the, with the I forgot the name of that airship. So I go to the airport and we have breakfast at the airport and and it starts to like get really windy and rainy and stuff out. I said, "Well, you know what? I guess that's it." He goes, "That's it. What that's it?" He goes He goes, "I said, "Well, we can't go flying." He goes, "Oh yeah, we're going to go flying." And the guy makes some kind of thing with he gets a phone brought over to the table and they deliver a Learjet outside the runway and we jump into a Learjet and we go to Texas on the Learjet in the Learjet and when we get to Texas he goes this is my property for the Budweiser Brewing Company's family the beer can makers property and we start he goes this is where my property starts and we flew for another two or three minutes and then we landed at an airport on the property of Bob and then we jumped into a Piper Cub and flew to where the stables were and then we went horseback riding and we did some stuff there on the ranch we did a little bit of shooting and stuff like that and then the next day we came back that was like one of the coolest things I ever did. So, but when when I'm going, I guess we're not going to be, oh yeah, we're going to fly. Well, we have, I ain't flying no damn ultralight. Crosswind in an ultralight is three miles an hour. That's, we're done. Six miles an hour, and we're going back to the airport on a crosswind. Now, that that's a true story. That's a true so Bud, so the guy's name was Bob. He was the great grandson of the guy who made all the cans for Budweiser. And if I remember, he got two cents a can profit for every can of Budweiser that was ever sold. Two cents. I think it was two cent, two pennies, and you, that was like hundreds of millions of dollars a month and plus he owned ball mason jars the all the ball mason jars with the click on lids he owned that company outright the grand grandfather and the, the Budweiser I think they got two two and a half cents something like that yeah that's a true story Why would I lie? tragic city Michigan well Take care. Nice talking to you about Traverse City. Thanks, TC. Thank you. Yup, Michigan is now 10 cents. Yeah, I can. Well, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for the confirmation. I'll never forget Traverse City, Michigan. One of the coolest places I ever lived in my life. I didn't live there. I only stayed there like three or four months a year. Hunting, fishing, ice fishing. I don't hunt, though. I, I've hunted, but I would never just say, let's go hunting. Like, if we were hungry, we'd go out and shoot a deer. And I would dress it, but I, that's not my thing, hunting. But when you're there, you do that. But everybody hunts. Everybody learns how to shoot a gun in Traverse City. At the age of three, you have a BB gun. At the age of five, you have a 22. By the time you're seven years old, you're loading and firing. M my friend's children, we would go hunting. All the children, they were five, six, seven years old. They were all shooting guns, 22s. Sem Simulacron. Flew a single engine, jumped out of planes, Flying ultralights had too low percentage of survival for my taste. But, Sim, but on 
on the pterodactyl. It, the ter for those of you who don't know what a pterodactyl is, it's just a big triangular wing. If the wing didn't fall off, then you could float down like a like a paper airplane. But if the wing fell off, and that never happened, then you would crash. The one with the front canard, now that, that ship was a crazy ship to fly because usually you have your horizontal stabilator in the back behind the motor. But on the front canard, the motor was behind you in the front canard. So if you pushed down too fast, you would you would dip right down really quick. That was you had to be real careful. But in the Cherokee Warrior 2, you guys could look this up. The Cherokee Warrior 2, we had a an explosive parachute. I don't know how much that was extra, but we did have an explosive parachute and it was a it was the Buccaneer it wasn't a Cherokee. It, it was the Buccaneer 2 amphibious and we would fly from from where we had the ultralights he kept it up there by his house that was by his house and we would fly out of that airport he had a, there was hangars up there on the top of the mountain and then we would land and puddle jump on the lakes and we would go fishing for fresh fresh fish where you couldn't get to no road access no no four wheel stuff none of that stuff and we would fly in, catch some fish, and then we'd come back and it was so it was such a great experience living in Michigan. Unlike like the frail man never could give you a story like that, and all my stories are true. That's the difference. He watches a YouTube channel and then he all of a sudden he became the person in the YouTube channel. Like he he repeats people's word phrases he repeats other people's stories just changes them around a little bit Mike Dowdy he has a plant in Bristol Tennessee ball Trump ball Trump almost put them out of business with his tariffs on Chinese metal my cousin was head of maintenance at the plant Wow, it's a small world. So that that guy that I met, so when I went home with Paul, now Paul didn't say much to Bob. And I remember Bob had on a brown a brown corduroy jacket. Okay? And on the on the on the elbows here on the elbow was suede leather. You know, that's an expensive type of apparel. But the suede was ripped. I'll never forget that. Because the guy, he looked like everybody else in the bar. But I'll just never forget that the guy had on a ripped suede. It was he didn't, he just looked like a regular guy in a bar having a few drinks. And and but the suede was ripped right on the bottom. It was wore out. Not so much ripped, but wore out right here on the elbow. And when when I when he left, he just said, "Look, I'll meet you at the airport for breakfast. We'll go flying." Apparently, he had something he wanted to do there in Texas. So when I left with Paul, I said, "Paulie, Paulie came over and said hello to Bob, but he didn't." I said, "Paulie, that guy wants to go flying in the morning. Is he cool?" I didn't know if he was cool or not because by that time there was a a hospital. I could have asked TC Michigan. By that time there was a hospital. The first hospital for AIDS patients in Michigan or in that area opened up right behind Front Street. And that the community there was became a lot of gay people that had AIDS back in the 80s. And I didn't know if that guy was cool to hang out with or he was a gay guy trying to pick me up. So Paulie said, no, no, he's cool. You go, you go have breakfast in the morning. And I did. And we did. And that was pretty cool. That, that, Paulie was, 
I can't tell you what Paulie did for a living, but he was not a normal person. He had he had the Buccaneer two with amphibious floats on it. He had a couple of motorcycles that I don't ride motorcycles. He had a couple of cars. He had a tractor. He had gun a gun collection that was abnormal, abnormally big. But he, he collected guns. He had the, the nicest house anybody ever saw up in the forest in the middle of nowhere. A four-car garage and and, and I don't know how many acres he owned. It was a lot of property. It would take you 10 minutes to walk across this property at a fast rate. And I don't know what I could say that Paulie did for a living, but I know he didn't work. That I know. And uh, he was, he, and he was, I met him because I needed a captain to, to bring the barge back from Traverse City, Michigan. And the captain, the other guy, the captain's name was Captain Bob. Captain Bob lived in Paulie's house. And Captain Bob ran me aground one day out of Traverse City near the Mackinac Bridge. And then I fired him when we got to uh, Alpena. Uh, when we got to Port Austin, Michigan, I fired him. I threw him off the barge. And affected repairs for like 35 days. I had to rebuild the an oil pump and several other things. When we ran aground, we destroyed some stuff internally. Anyway, and then I met Paulie, and Paulie said to me, he goes, this guy, he's the only guy that you're going to get. I didn't know how to get home from Traverse City, Michigan. I had a map. And Paulie said, well, do you know anything about boats? I said, I know a lot of stuff about boats, but I don't know. I don't know where I am. I'm on, in Lake Michigan. Bring me to New York. I'll, he goes, well, Bob will, Bob will get you to New York. He knows the lakes. Bob ran me aground the first night out. First day and a half, second night out, something like that. And, uh, and, and I blew up the, inter the internals of the, the stern drive unit. Blew up. It blew up. It blew what is called, oh, uh, I, I replaced it with a universal, $5, $500 universal, um, but a universal, universal, a conical gear. It's, it's a ball, a ball the, about this big, and the ball has teeth on it. And the teeth go into the other teeth around. I should have saved it. And uh, and I blew it apart. We hit, we hit a rock. And it just, it was old. It was already from the 40s. So by the, when it blew apart, that was not replaceable. So I talked to a guy in Canada who had the plans for that stern drive unit. And he said the barrel gear was 10 feet long. He said to me, that part is not available, but there was an experiment to use a universal, you know, like a four-way universal like you have on your drive shaft of your car, but the universal was nine inches in diameter, and it had to have a 50,000-pound thrust rating. So at universal ball bearing, on Universal Drive in Universal, Michigan, there was one, one Universal. And th that was it. In the world, there was just that one. And a guy found out that I needed that Universal. And when I called up for the Universal, it was 500 bucks. I said, yeah, all right, I'll be there in a couple of days because it was down by Detroit, Michigan. And that was far. Detroit was far from Traverse City. And I, I couldn't leave that day. And the next day I would be traveling all day and I'd be there on the third day. And, and the guy calls me back about an hour later. He goes, 
Mike, somebody just bought that barrack. And I said, what do you mean somebody bought the bearing? He goes, somebody bought the bearing, but they're willing to sell it to you for $5,000. So they knew I needed the bearing because I had the barge and I was stuck in Port Austin, Michigan. Well, anyway, that man and I talked for a little while and he had not picked up the bearing yet. And he decided that it would probably be best to not buy the bearing. And then I bought the bearing for five hundred dollars. It was a scam. He was gonna, he was gonna make a quick forty-five hundred dollars. The shit I had to do <laughs> to get that barge back. Anyway, I I bought the bearing. I went there and I the bearing was sitting on the table and universal ball bearing on Universal Drive in Universal, Michigan. And the guy knew right away what bearing I wanted. I told him I needed a 50,000 pound truss. He goes, yeah, we got one of those in stock, $500. Darren Jefferson, Dawn, Dawn Jefferson. Hello, Dawn, thanks for stopping by. So I wonder if Universal ball bearing is still there. Let's take a look. See if I can confirm another story. Universe S A L Ball Bearing Universal Michigan M I C H A G A N Universal Ball Bearing on Universal Universal Drive. Universal Drive. It was D R I V E. Universal Drive. I'll never forget that place. Detroit, Michigan. There it is, Universal Bearing. Let's take a look. You guys think I make these stories up. So now I made a Hey Frell, this is does this a made up story also? Universal Bearings. Universal Ball Bearing. Universal Drive, Michigan. Is that a made-up story, Pharrell? Let's go here. Ah, you guys trying to, always trying to catch me in a lie. Universal Bearing Company. Where was that first place? I don't know where that first place, but that was on Universal Drive. Let's just Google that. Okay, right there. Okay. And it's not there anymore. Wow. Yeah, that was 1988. That was actually July or June of 19... May or June of... No, May. May 20th, probably. Anyway, that was the name of the place. Universal Bearing Company, Detroit, Michigan. Here it is, right here. Okay, that's the one, Detroit, Michigan, wholesale. It was a big, the company made the bearings right there. So this is it. Wholesale. Yep, that's it. Right near Detroit, Michigan. Hey, Frell, did I make up another story, Frell, or did, is that one true? Yeah, Frell. He's, he loves trying to catch me in lies. Lies. All right, I'm done. 
I'm done talking. I'm actually done talking. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, for Sim. Thank you. So Sim jumped out of airplanes. You know, Sim, I almost... I wanted to... I actually, actually wanted to talk to you. Talk, talk to you, but... I didn't get to uh, asking you for a way to get to talk to you. Sim flew single engines. I believe that. Sim jumped out of planes. I believe that. And flying ultralights had a low percentage of survival, for my taste. So that's true. <laughs> and and you want to hear, the, if Sim, if you're here, if you're not here, I'll just tell the story anyway. Because I got nothing else to do. So when you sat in the pterodactyl, okay, normally you guys are thinking you're going to sit down in an airplane in its seat with a cushion and, and a, and a, and a five-point harness or something like that. No, when you sat in the pterodactyl and the, and the airplane with the front canard, okay, there was no seat. None at all. There was no seat. You sat in a nylon bag, like a sleeping bag, but it was nylon. And you sat in a nylon bag, and you had your, you had your foot pedals, and you had your yoke all inside the bag. So you sat in the bag, and now... You are sitting in a nylon bag. You are sitting in a nylon bag. About, and your wheels, left and right, keep you off the ground. From, because if, if you did what I did, and I did crash, and lived to tell about it. I blew one of the wheels, the, the wheel on the starboard side of the aircraft. I blew it off the plane. I, I landed too hard and I landed sideways like this. And the wheel just collapsed. It was there, but it was just, it's only, it's, how do you, how do I tell you this? The frame was like the frame of a of a lawn chair, the thin aluminum, like a lawn chair aluminum. It wasn't much thicker than that. So when I hit too hard, the wheel just blew blew up. It blew off. It blew up into the air. It was just dangling like this. Now I gotta land. So I do a I do a what what you call it, a hit and run. I do a, a flyby. Because now I'm paranoid. I panicked. So I, I do a, a flyby. I, I, I give it full throttle. Full throttle. You know, full throttle. And then I take off again. And everybody knew that the that I blew the wheel off the plane. They could see it all. Da they could see the damage. I didn't hurt the wings. but I. So now I got to land the plane without the wheel. I, and I don't want to land the plane without the wheel. I want to. I don't know what to do, so I I make a pass around the airport and I come back in, and I come down. The next time I I had a, I don't know if I hit. Sim is saying they're dangerous. I might have hit a crosswind. I might have just made a mistake. I don't remember the event itself because it happened so fast. But when I came down, the plane hit wrong and smash the wheel so now when i come in i land it's grass it's a grass field and it's it's smooth and i could i'm like this the, and and what was smashing around on the grass but no rocks i didn't get hurt but i'll never forget that i'll never forget that i'll never forget coming in and landing i was in a bag i was in a bag and everybody ran over to me. Jamie was, it was Jamie's front canard plane. 
It was Jamie's, Jamie had the pterodactyl in the front canard. Paulie had the buccaneer, too. It was Jamie's plane, and he goes, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay, but I'm sorry about it. He goes, I don't worry about the plane. We crashed that one all the time. So we went home. We took it home with us. We packed it up into a, it folded up, it came, came right apart. And we went home and fixed it that same day. And he goes, come on, let's go back to the airport. And I go, well, he goes, no, 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 you got you to gotta fly. He goes, you got to. You, you got to get back on the horse. So we went right back to the airport after we fixed it the next day, and I flew it again up in that area. And then that day, I took it down. I took it far that day. I got lost. If I didn't find the Holiday Hill Road, I don't know where I would have landed, but I would have just landed someplace and called them up, told them to come pick me up with the truck. But I flew it. Sim knows about this. So when you're flying a pterodactyl, a three or four mile an hour wind is going to... So I, I drifted. So when I took off from the airport, I went down to Traverse City proper, where Tom's food market is, which was about, I don't know, seven or eight miles. It wasn't far. And, but... I got, I drifted off the main road and I didn't really know where I was because I didn't know whether I drifted to the left of the main road or the right side of the main road. And the gas tank was just two, three gallon plastic jugs of gas or maybe four gallons they were so when I got lost I went up a little bit higher and I could see Lake Michigan and then when I got up and when I went to Lake Michigan I saw the coal dock where the, where the coal comes in for the for the businesses the uh, coal comes in on ships and for my and for my coal I found the coal dock, and the coal dock was just a straight, just follow the road straight up to the top of the hill, and that's where the airport was. So I came back, it took, I was gone a long time. I was gone, I don't know how long, hour, maybe an hour. And I was running out of gas, which was cool, I could have landed on the road. But you could see the gas tank, one was here, one was like right here, and one was right over here. And when I got back, I still had about that much gas in each tank. And they were going, well, we thought you crashed. And I'm going, no, I'm okay. And he goes, so you're good. I says, I'm good. And, and that was it. And that's, that was how they knew I was cool to fly. That's how you learn to fly a pterodactyl. Just one seat. And the same thing with the one with the front car, just one seat. In the Buccaneer 2, it was two-seater. And Paulie was the one who gave me my uh, experimental license, aircraft license, because he was an instructor. And he would fly from... He did fly to Oshkosh, Begot, Oshkosh to the fly-in, big fly-in in Oshkosh. But mostly he drove down. He was a pretty cool dude, man. I don't know what that guy did for a living. He didn't do much. I never saw him. He didn't work, but he he knew, he knew how to fix. He we would pull one of those engines apart. We would take the engine off the Buccaneer and rebuild something and put it back on the same day or get parts for it. Um, he knew how to fix the motorcycle. He knew how to change the oil in the car. He was a good mechanic. He had a full mechanic shop. It was pretty cool living in Michigan. All right, no more comments for about 10 minutes now. We'll say goodnight. Thanks for stopping by. If you haven't pushed the thumbs up and you want to do that, I gave you a pretty good show. And you know I'm telling you the truth. You just got to know. With Travis TC Michigan coming on, confirming, you know I deserve a thumbs up. Thank you very much. 
in advance. I don't see that thumbs up moving, boy. You, what you do is, you know that you're going to give Frel a thumbs up sometime in the distant future. You give me his thumbs up and you can owe him one. Okay? Because that guy never told you a good story. He don't fly pterodactyls. He's never had a, a house backed up against state land. Although his house is, oh, he has a big house. He has a mansion in, in, uh, in the Philippines. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, he has a beautiful house that we have to give him. He has a beautiful house. He did a beautiful job. He, he definitely did a beautiful job fixing up his beautiful house. There's no place, nothing to do living there. And he lives in the middle of nowhere with nothing to do any place else. But the house itself, you could take that house and move it to a place where there was something to do. That would be a beautiful house with a place with something to do. you got to give him that. You get, he, he did a beautiful job. Did a beautiful job. Put the put the generator in the wrong place, though, because he put the generator right under his bedroom window where it makes noise. And the fumes can come in the window, but that's just the only mistake that I know of that he, that he mentioned. Yeah. All right, then. Let's say good night. Good night. I'm being permy from the Philippines, baby. And of course, Amping Parmi means take care always. From the Philippines, baby. That's right. Oy vey en shalom. No, no more thumbs up. Man, you hurt my feelings. Bye-bye for now. That's right.